Welcome to the stream, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Iggy Kid on Twitch.tv. And now, introducing your host, from the 16-bit afterlife, weighing in at 273 kilobytes, assisted by the hands and voice of her mortal vessel, Iggy Kid. They are the ghost in the machine, the electric specter. El Phantasma de la Electriciedad! Me! Oh! Ding almond on. Hello. One second. Meaning almonds. I timed it out poorly. Ah, good almonds. Um, hey! It has been quite some time, um, since I last streamed. Excuse me for, uh, the way that Lee is gonna kinda go wacky for a second. Well, I adjust my levels so that I can hear myself. There we go. Turn the game up a little bit. There we go. All right, this is Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, which just got put on the Nintendo Switch Online uh, pack, and it's a Kirby game that I haven't played. Uh, my first experiences with Kirby really were Nightmare on Dreamland, the remake for Game Boy Advance, so I would have loved to have played this game, but uh, I never bothered to ask for it. I, I realized as a kid there were always games that I wanted, but I never... I never old anybody so I was just always like hmm why can't I get these games it's like oh yeah maybe I should should ask for them but uh that being said let's get into it oh there goes midnight got a little phone in the corner oh all these guys are just hanging out okay ah they're gonna follow along okay it controls like a Kirby game these fall? Nope. They look like they would. Uh, I guess they're just following along. In multiplayer, it's all together. I I noticed playing um what was it? Uh, one of the Mario games. Having multiplayer in a 2D side scroll like this is kind of a bad idea because it's just really there's barely enough space for the characters as they are. What? Where did you get fire? Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Where did you get fire? Mm, greedy. Oh, well. I swear I didn't see any fire guys. I guess they just grabbed them when I wasn't looking. I don't need any help right now, so I'll just skip past that. I'm curious, is there a way to... Oh, hello. Ah, okay, you can call him. I gotcha. Sword! Sword's a good one. Although, I think I would have liked the uh, bow and arrow there if that is an ability. I do always like, with sword, when you're in the air, you do the wah, 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 sonic style twirl. That's very, very satisfying. Oh, oh okay. I'm already at the end. It is the first level in a Kirby game. They tend to be pretty fast and easy. Alright, oh, okay. I right, gotcha. Still learning little bits. Call for help with R. Hold L to start over. Okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. Oh! Evil tonight. Which is a little bit of a confusing concept considering how ambiguous Mid Knight already is. Hmm. 
mean, so far this is a very nice college Kirby game. I'll say that. Hey, hey, give that back. There we go. Music is great. It sounds unique. I can't remember hearing this particular track in a Kirby game before. But granted, I haven't played... Whoa. Oh. That was stupid of me. I haven't played every uh, Kirby game. I didn't play... I didn't play this one before, and I didn't play Squeak Squad, which I believe was the one after this. But I played Nightmare in Dreamland, which was a uh, remake. Um, and I played uh, Kirby 64 a lot. Uh, I also played one that a lot of people haven't touched, which is Kirby... Ah, Kirby and the Canvas Curse, which is great. Great uh, DS game. Nothing? Okay. Okay. Um, I have this set to any percent, but being that it's Kirby, I probably could 100% it, so we'll see We'll see how close we are to 100% when I beat it. And then go from there. Ooh, top or bottom? Uh, let's go from the top. Oh, looks like... Oh, okay. Whoops. Oh, what did that guy feel? Boxing! Boxing! Oh, yeah, Fighter's a good one. I was like, my favorite was, um... What was it, the throw? Oh, it's, it's, it's straight up... It's just Ryu. You got a Hadouken and everything. It was great. He's got little kicks. Kick it. Kick it. Yeah! I love it. Uh, sword guy? Excuse me, sword knight. I do like... It's not consistent throughout Kirby's, but... I do like when they have, like, the little health bar and they tell you who the guy is. Whoa! I like this. I, I like the abilities in Kirby where it has a lot of different options in that particular ability. Especially when it's, like, automated to make you feel like you really know what you're doing. Like, when I was just... Punch in there, and then I did... Like, an up, up punch. I didn't do that on purpose. Like that there? That uppercut? That feels good. See, we're still playing fighting games, kinda. Kind of, I mean, this is basically like... I was just Ryu's Dragon Punch, right? Did Ryu have the Dragon Punch? Listen, man, I'm not that great at fighting games. I think... I think that's pretty clear to anybody who's actually watched this stream previously. Um, whoops. Alright. Ah! Shadow Kirby! Shadow Kirby! Oh, literally called Shadow Kirby. Huh? Yeah. No need to get too creative with it, frankly. It's creative enough without having to give him a wacky name. Ooh. You're trying to trick me into going for the star when there might be something over here. What's up? It's over on this side. Anything cool? Any sneaky secrets? No, that's just for... Ah, ambience! Ah, Weddle Dee! Maybe it was my boxing. Dang it. I was like, why is it hesitating? And I'm like, oh yeah, in case there's other characters with you. You need some time. Come on. Stone, uh... I mean, I like the way it looks, but... I'm sure I'm not the first to point out that stone is the least interesting... ability in Kirby, you know? Like, there's some little things you can do with it on slopes and stuff, but it's like... You kind of just got the drop on. Oh, who's this guy? Who's this? Snooter. I don't know Snooter. And bam! Oh, no, 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 no! Don't do it. Don't do it. I guess it's also nice to have invulnerability for a minute. You know? Let's take those guys out. Nice. I don't know. Has anybody watched the, um... Sakurai... 
videos. He he does YouTube videos now, which is awesome. Mr. Flosty. I think that that is a translation error. Because it'd probably be Mr. Frosty, right? The, the whole... Okay. Uh, studying J Japanese, and I think anybody who's studied even a little bit of Japanese will also know this. Um, the whole English thing of the R's and the L's. Uh, that's because in Japanese they don't really have L as a as a letter. Oh no. Oh no, what do I do? Uh oh. Or wait, I guess I do this. Beow. Beow. Okay. Oh! Who's this guy? Who's this little guy? Should I try and get him? I mean, probably like it more than what I'm using. Alright, whoops, that's not what I meant. Um No, 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 don't get me! Batty. Well. Once again, names ain't so creative, but the rest of the game is. Ugh. I don't know. It, uh, is it select? I'm using the N64, the wireless N64 controller, which the only thing it doesn't have is a select button, so. Ooh! Can I get the fighty back? I want to. I want to get the fight. like a shortcut. Ah, dip. Is it? No? Come on. How do I... I think it is select. Yep. Crap. Well, I don't have a select button. I think. Right? I feel like there should be a way to do it. I don't know. That's fine. We'll just roll with the punches. Whoa! So fast. Th that is one thing I really appreciate about Kirby in general, is the, um... The pacing is always nice. Like, it always feels like you're moving... Whoa! Oh, that was a secret block guy! Just pretending to be a block? Ah, sneaky! Alright, we're gonna go with beam. I don't like stone. I'm sure there's people out there who are like, oh, Stone's my favorite. And it's like, hey, good for you. But the way, for my play style, it doesn't work out. It doesn't work out so good. Get, get snooter. Or snooty. I forget what they call me. Also, while I'm not a huge fan of Beam either, because it's like, it, it takes so long, it's kind of a narrow... It's kind of a narrow, like... But I do like this gesture hat. I think Kirby is like slightly, slightly darker shade. Maybe that's just how it looks with the, the orange next to him. Oh, Ooh. could be bad. Snooter. Ah, no, give it back. That's fine. Just we'll get this guy. Heavy knife. Does that mean I can't shook him up? Nope. Just takes a second. Sword. Give him a sword. No, no, no. Don't want to lose the cherries. Here we go. Go, 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 go. Nah, man. Fighting. I think fighting is going to be my favorite in this game. I always liked Cook. Cooking was good, and Mike was really fun. Although, Mike, you only get to use it three times. Oh. oh there it goes. Still lets you hang on to it for the fade out, which is a smart move in terms of design, is like having the little bit of. If you have something like that that is, um, that lasts as long as the music, having a little bit of a fade out so that people know, like, okay, you only have, like, a, a tiny bit left, you better, you better figure things out. Like, that's very helpful. Get out of here. Get out of here. Because, like, after you've played for a while, you're going to get a sense for how long it lasts regardless, but, like, if you... If you include that, it's like, even the first time, I could tell that it was not going to last any longer. Can I get him? Can I get him? No. Oh, rip. All right. Ooh, hey, okay. That's neat. So instead of the usual tree guy, I mean, it's... It looks different. Oh, he sh th shoots out golems, so that's... 
that's different. But for the most part, it's just the tree again. Because that's all, always the first boss of pretty much every Kirby, right? Is that tree. Although, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, it's like a... Uh, some kind of gorilla. I want to play that one really bad as well, but... I keep looking at it, I'm like, ah, uh, I feel like I can wait. It's like between that and Yoshi's Crafted World, which are two that I really want to play. I'm always just like, mm, I can hold back. I can hold back. Um, hmm, okay. Oh, I see. I see how this goes. Little well, shortcut back so you know, uh, know how to do it. Um. So what do I do now? Cause I already did this level. Okay. Oh. Have they, have they been off doing their own thing this whole time? Hey, when did you get wheel power? Pretty neat. Wheel is one of my favorites too, although... Eh, wheel is not that different from stone. It's just like forward instead of straight down, so there's a little more to it. But unless the level is particularly designed to work with it, it's not really going to be that helpful. Hey, stop it. Got him. Come up. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, one of them has laser and the other has UFO. UFO is one of my favorites as well. Because, like, that one, it's like you get to move around in a different way and you get, uh, you get lasers. It's pretty nice. Whoop. Get out of here. Get out of here. Ooh, got him in the back. That was cool. Alright, does this take me somewhere new? I don't think so. This was very familiar. Is this like a non-linear thing? Like I'm supposed to be finding secret passageways out of the level? Bang, bang. Scarfy. That's what those guys are called? Those guys are always annoying, because it's like if you try and suck them up, they turn all mean. But if you have an item, you can take them out pretty easy. There he hangs. Bow. Yeah. Oh, get out of here. Get out of here. Ooh, no thank you. No thank you. Right, this is where I got tricked by that Waddle Dee. Hmm. Yeah, how do I open up the next levels? Is it like a teamwork thing? Do I have to call in the other guys? Ooh, hamburger. Rounded mutton. I was just watching um, Fellowship of the Ring Extended Edition, which is so long. It's like almost four hours. Ugh. But, pretty good. Pretty freaking good. I didn't finish it, though, to be clear. I think it's on Max or whatever, which I don't have, so I just was using the trial to be like, maybe I'll get through the full Extended Edition. I did not. It's just, yeah, oh, man. As much as I like Lord of the Rings... No! Let me out! Oh, anything. Nope. It just... Um... Man, too much is, is definitely possible. I, I have a, a definite, like, appetite cap for Lord of the Rings. In a way that I don't for a lot of other things. No, let me out! Let me out! Hmm. How do I bust it? Can you do it? Maybe it's beam. Nope. Gotta figure out a way through there. 
feel like that's gonna be important. Wait, it wasn't Cutter. So Sir Kibro can be done. You don't give me anything. Except for sometimes some curry. Which is appreciated. Not what I need. Uh, here. Yep, yep, yep. Give me so that I can use that. Oh! Forgot that he does the jump sometimes. That was tough. Ah, I see, see you do that, and you can get him in just the two. Ice. Ice is nice. And you can get it twice! Well, you can get it multiple times, I'm sure. Yeah, ice is fun as well, because you can uh, freeze him and then also scoot along like that. It's also with the waddle doos. Like the the hitbox is a little confusing there. No, nope, that still didn't do it. Huh. I feel like maybe bomb would have done it, but I didn't feel like hanging on to bomb. That's usually what they'll do in these, right? Is they'll like have the thing you need for a particular secret, like way at the beginning of the game or the beginning of the level, and then if you kind of have an inferior ability just to uh just to get the secret make it a little more challenging which is clever I feel like he is uh, not weak to ice I feel like that's why he's doing so little damage come on go down go down go down <laughs> no 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 okay ooh that was a little dicey Made it. This this guy here. Yeah, freeze the bat. Woo! Hey! See? Ice is very fun for that. Can you see what's up here? Oh, man. That's not helpful. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like there's a bunch of the level that I'm not even getting to because I'm playing alone. We got Blocky. That sneaky guy. This may be a game that needs to be multiplayer. Like, clearly they're letting me play it single player, but I get the vibe that, like, they expect you to have more guys hanging out. For one reason... It's also I can't tell what the other guys would be doing, even if they were here. So, it doesn't really incentivize me to go get- uh, that's fine. That's fine, let's see if we can get a different ability. Get out of here, Snooter. I'll take Happy Knight. I'll take him. Oh ho ho, here's a sneaky secret. Oh, but I can't break through. Hold on, can you guys help? Can one of you guys help, help me? Well, smooch. All right. Can't ask for this, but I'll be uh, all set. Let me, let me through. Okay. Sorry, boys. Fight. Yes, fighter. Fighter is very nice. What am I doing? I got ability. Hey, there we go. There we go. A little secret. Oh, is there just the maximum tomato? Ah, okay, I'll take it. Whoop. Uh, uh, don't do it. Yeah, there we go. Uh, well, I don't need the energy drink. about it. Bomb on the table. Bomb on the floor. Alright. That sets you up before the boss fight here. I can still get him. Yeah, 
Oh, and they got the spike guy, so actually that changes this up quite a bit too, from how it usually is with the tree. Well, I just kind of went through it again. Missing something? Wow. Ooh, that's nice. Okay. Hmm. This just takes me back into level, so where am I? What am I to do? Am I just supposed to continue looking for secret ways out? I don't remember this. Come on, boys! Yeah, there we go. Sorry for your deaths, but we needed to make it happen. No. Is that not enough? Come on, guys! Hang out with me over here. <coughs> Do we need all four? I think we need all four. Down here, bro. We gotta, we gotta do the thing. Uh oh. Come on, everybody. Come on, hang out with old Curb. Stand up there. Uh, stack you all up. Come on over here. Hey, yo, Lime. Come on. Uh, can't with these guys. It's like herding cats. They won't listen. Oh, good for you. Oh, good for you. Well, maybe there is something I missed. This is where Wheelie would be useful. This one, it can bust through. I know that for sure. Gosh. I don't know what the criteria is for breaking through these blocks or not, but I know that they're... Ooh! Oh, sneaky! Oh, what? Those guys are new. That's cool. They, like, s to hide the door? That's interesting. Okay. Watch it. Hey, watch out! Nope, 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 I need that. Okay. Ah, no, please. Okay, there we go. Now I gotta find my way back to the next level. <coughs> oh, excuse me. All that almond dust. They're, uh, smokehouse almonds. Which I've had before, but I didn't, um, never this many. I got, like, a big, I went to an outlet store, and they had, like, what is it? I think almost three pounds, like a gigantic bag for, uh, like, five bucks. So I was like, well, I like almonds. It's a good snack, but, uh, yeah, Smokehouse Almonds is, it's like drinking steak sauce, dude. It's, like... So savory, so kind of rich in its own particular way. That it's like, after a little while, it's kind of unpleasant. I don't mind. I think, uh, I would say the wasabi, or what is it? 
Blue Diamond or something. I don't know. The, I, usually the Wasabi ones are the nicest. They have this el uh, Elote one. So it tastes like... I know, it's weird because it's... It's all of the fixings of elote, but instead of corn, it's almond. So it's just like your brain is a little confused. Similar to one time I got from Dollar General uh, cinnamon sugar Pringles. So they were sweet Pringles. Those were not great. Because like when you're expecting something sweet, Instead, you just get some bland potato mush, mulch, some pulp. I just, oh, thanks for, thanks for the thing, Boxy. Um, it was not that Boxy. If you, if you know who I'm talking about, you know what I'm saying. Um, but uh, yeah, they were not pleasant. These are okay. The elote one, uh, almonds are pretty good even. But I believe they have cheese. I'm trying to avoid dairy. For the sake of... For the sake of my face! Ugh, my acne has been so bad lately. My dermatologist has said that, um... Have, like, had me on different prescriptions. I'm on, like, uh, an oral prescription right now, which is okay. It used to be more effective. I think just, like, my digestion has changed enough that it's not absorbing correctly. But, um, it works all right. Been very good about my skincare. You know, I'm making sure to... I have a, uh, CeraVe, uh, salicylic acid cleanser that I do in the morning and the night. Which might be a little much. I should probably... I should probably... Uh, mix that up with some straightforward, like, hydrating cleanser, too. Because, yeah, I think I might be stripping a little too much of the moisture barrier from my face. In general. Um, I do an eye cream, which is also CeraVe. It's, that's usually my go-to, is, like, if I'm not sure. It's, like, I'll check the ingredients to make sure there's nothing that I know is, like, pretty rough. Like, you know, you don't want, like, alcohol because it's going to dry you out, or like, um, sulfates, obviously, same as with your hair. Uh, but yeah, when in doubt, I just go CeraVe because it's, they tend to be pretty alright, and they tend to be pretty affordable. But yeah, I've been using their eye cream. I was using vitamin C serums, which were okay. They were helping, because, like, uh, I have, like, an olive skin tone, so my... So I end up, especially whenever I break out, I end up with, like, hyperpigmentation. I don't think quite rosacea. I do get kind of red around, like, my mouth and cheeks, but it's not too bad. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I felt like maybe it was just, like, overloading my face with stuff to have that serum. Because I was doing it, like, every day, which is, I think, a little much. Um, and then, I've been using Versts. The brand is Versed Dew Point Moisturizer, which is pricey. It's, like, 15 bucks for a tiny little bottle. But it goes for a while. And it's great. It's got, like, aloe vera. It's very hydrating, but it's not, like, super thick on your face. Like, I'm not... I'm not a fan of, the, like, really thick moisturizers because it just feels like it's... I don't know, it just feels like it's, like, clogging up all my pores and make, leaving my face all, like, clumpy and sticky. It's like... What's even the point? Like, that's the thing I've noticed with skincare is, like, half the time, it's like I end up with a bunch of stuff on my face, and it's like, well, now my face is all sticky with stuff on it, so I'm not even getting to enjoy, like, the soft skin underneath that I've been trying to protect and improve. Um, but yeah, I've been... Magic. Whoa! Wow! That was crazy. Okay. 
Alright, let's get out of here. Oh, oh, I gotta actually catch stuff. That's new for Kirby. Uh, uh, uh. One-ups, one-ups. Oh my god, so many one-ups. Whoa! Uh, so yeah, I do that in the morning, and then at night I will do, um, in today I'm gonna be doing a, uh, neither of those is what I want. I just gotta get the thingy guy, and then get back, really. Uh, and then at night I will do the same thing and then uh, before I do moisturizer I will do a serum or in the morning I will do a microfoliant which is what's the microfoliant I use I don't remember off the top of my head but it's just like a bunch of like very fine sand that is um, environmentally safe and I'll do that after my cleanser in the morning and I'll shave on those days, since now my face is all nice and smoothed out for shaving. Since I only really need to shave, like, every... Every three days. I could probably go every two days, but my skin can be pretty sensitive, so I want to be careful with that. Not to get a bunch of bumps all over my neck. Um... But... Yeah, I, uh... I'll do that the day after... I do my, um, like today, I'm going to do retinol serum, which is good for, like, resurfacing. It's a version of vitamin A. It basically, like, it it can be a little rough, so you don't want to do it too much. I do it every th three days, so basically twice a week. But it, like, resurfaces everything. It helps with hyperpigmentation. It helps with, like, acne scarring, which I don't have a huge problem with acne scarring, but I have some spots. Especially on my nose, my uh, chin, and like along my jaw. Because as I'm sure a lot of other people can relate, um, I did not know how to take care of my face for quite a while, so I would pop my zits, which not only introduce the risk of infection, but also can scar your face, and that sucks. So don't pop your zits. Let them breathe. You can get, uh, what I've been using are these Starface... Starface hydrocolloid patches. They're just like little... little stars that you stick over your acne, and it helps them to, uh... It helps your face to stay hydrated and to keep it protected from infection and all that. Usually I'll do them overnight, because while while they are cute, little, little yellow stars, uh, you know, especially if you're going about and doing your stuff, you can kind of just trap oils in your face using them. So that's not great. Whoop! I already lost the thing that I needed, so... I'm just gonna kind of zip through this level again. Um... So yeah, I will usually put those on any, like, obvious acne after I do the rest of my skincare stuff and I've let, like, my moisturizer soak in for a minute. Um... I know he's coming up. I know he's gonna wake up. Nice try. Uh... Yeah, so it's like one day retinol, one day that I'll do the micro thing for the exfoliation, which granted, the uh, salicylic acid cleanser is already doing exfoliation, so, you know, you want to not do it too much because then you'll just strip everything away from your face and you'll be kind of defeating the whole point of trying to put good stuff in your face. Um... And then the third day, I just do everything else and nothing extra. Let my face just chill out for a bit. At the very least, you want to do a cleanser and you want to do some moisturizer for sure. Some serum would also be good, but you kind of have to figure out which one's best for your needs and like which one just works best for you because every face is going to be a little different. 
So you don't want to... You don't want to just do the same thing everybody else is doing and hope that it works. You kind of got to do it. And it all takes so long. Like, it's, and there's no instant results. It, like, takes weeks and weeks to start getting results. But my face is a lot smoother and a lot softer than it used to be. So, progress. Progress. Um... Also, if you go outside a lot, I don't, so I'm not very good about this. Most skincare people will tell you SPF, sunscreen, is like the most important part of a skincare thing, and you put it on after moisturizer, and yeah, the thing they'll make your, give you lines and make you age the fastest is gonna probably be the sun, if you're in it for all that much, but I'm not. A, I'm not, and B, uh, again, I have all of skin tone, so like all of the the, the good SPF stuff uh, makes me very white cast. It like makes me look super pale and gross because it's like it's all zinc, which is great for your skin, but it makes you look ghoulish. It looks very silly when I'm in a bunch of that. So unless I'm gonna be out for like quite a while, I don't bother with that stuff, but don't, don't take my advice on that. You should definitely use an SPF, especially if you go out and about, even if you're just like hanging out by a window where there's a lot of sun coming in, like you should definitely use some, uh, use some SPF. Keep yourself looking fresh and young for as long as you can. Whoa, okay, that's not what I meant to do. Ah, that was probably the trick, wasn't it? That was probably the trick. Okay, so this is interesting. This is like a... This is like a non-linear Kirby game. You gotta, like, actually find the exit. Ah, uh, ah, uh, no. I like that. It feels very, uh, kind of Wario Land. Which is one of my favorite games, as I've said on here. Oh! No! I got smooched. I got smooched and she stole my thing. Oh jeez. No! No! Stop! I didn't ask for this. Very rude. Very rude. Now, don't get smooched. Not again! Woohoo! Ah, oh, ah, ah. No, no, thank you. I, oh. How do I get over there? Oh, okay, it just breaks. That's convenient. Oh, oh. Alright, spare key. Oh, no! Ah, it was so close. Oh, God, it just started me back here. Ooh, Anna can get laser. Let me get the lasers. Excuse me? Laser! No! Oh. Yep. Oh, wait a minute. No, that's a, that's a dip. That's a dip right there. What's up here? Oh, 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 oh. Well, that's something. I don't think that's what we want, though. Yeah, I did see down here earlier, so maybe this is okay. Ha! Get that back. I think make it to that end door now. This is cool. This is it's it's still like room to room looks like a classic Kirby game, but like structurally, like the moment to moment is different, but the overall structure of the level is very different from other Kirby's. That's neat. I like that. Granted, I'm probably missing out on a lot by not playing this multiplayer. It seems like that is definitely what the focus was supposed to be, but that's okay. It also seems like it can work for both. In fact, I think part of it being non-linear is so that when you're playing multiplayer, you, uh... You can, like, all be exploring the stages, running around, like, Hey, I found a thing over here, and you'll be like, Oh, let's check it out together, guys. 
That sounds like a, a whole heap of fun. Huh. Careful. Careful. Bow, bow, bow. There we go. Okay. Oh, jeez. Careful. Careful. Ha. Ah. Ha. Ah. Fire. Fire. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Okay. I believe there is a potion up here. Some sort of Ooh, energy drink. <laughs> no! Uh... That's okay. As long as I don't go back through that door, I'll be safe. Because that's what messed me up last time. Meow. Whoops. No, no, no. Let me get it. Ah! Dip. Well, that's fine. I don't need laser. I just would have liked it. In fact, this guy seems a lot more useful how they designed this part. Am I going faster? I think I go a little faster when I got the electric power. No! Oh, these guys suck. Leap? Not a fan. Not a fan. Them. Um. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh no! Oh man! Oh. <sighs> okay, I gotta do all that again. Back. It's fine. It's fine. Or wait, what am I doing? Uh, wait, no. Uh, there. There we go. I forgot this has a rewind function. I hope I can rewind. Two back here. There we go. Or what am I even? Eh. I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. Get out of here. Uh, call in the guys. Maybe somebody here. Ah, oh, thank you. How do we get in? Guys, how do we get in? Okay, there we go. Somebody figured it out. Oh, okay. What's, what's up? Oh, is that all that was? I thought that was like the end of the level. Let's see. I call them in. Can they help? Smooch. Um. Ah. Nope. Dip, then I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do at this point. Like, this game is fun, but it's a little obtuse. It's a little, a little difficult to understand what you're meant to do. Uh, I'm gonna take a quick bite of almond. Boys, what do we got? Hmm. Can't oh, there we go. It was a sneaky misdirect. Can I? Thank you. 
more, maybe not. The trick I realized before coming on here is like, I want to have snacks. But if I am eating it, these delicious almonds, while I'm playing, my hands are going to be covered in almond dust from all the flavor. So that's not going to be good for my controllers. And I was like, wait a minute. Almonds are small. So what I did was just pour them into a cup. So now if I want some almonds, instead of grabbing a greasy handful, I can just pour some in my mouth. Easy peasy. It, it makes me think of, what was it? Ah, oh, there was a name for it. There was that company for a brief time. Excuse me. Uh, that did, what was it, like, Gamer Chow, I think they called it? Which, in retrospect, is actually pretty fun. Alright, I won't lie. Gamer Chow, I totally think I'd be into that now if they made it. But it was just, like, a pile of snacks, right? It was just a bunch of, like, tiny chips. It was just, like, small... I think they were, like, bugles, kind of. But more compact. More dense. Um, and... Oh, wait a minute. That scooted a little bit. Mm. Ooh, up. Oh, wait, I can't take any more damage, though. I will die. Yeah, it's moving. It's moving a little bit, so I guess we gotta just keep at it. Huh. I didn't even think it could do that. All right, I'm gonna let die. But one of the big things about it is like the, the, it was one of those things where it's like food for gamers, so you can shovel food in your mouth. And like one of the things was that the packaging was designed so that you could, um, the packaging was designed so that you could, you could pour it into your mouth easily. And it was like peanut butter and jelly, nachos, like, just silly, silly foods. Uh, but, that's pretty much what I'm doing here. And honestly, it's pretty convenient. There was also what was the Gamer Fuel from Mountain Dew, which was an energy drink where it was a full-size can, but it only had like 17 grams of sugar, which was great. Because those things can be like packed with like 60 grit like Red Bull has so much sugar in it. But it wasn't that bad, and it had a closable top, so it was a can, but it had like a little sliding plastic piece that would hold it shut so that you wouldn't lose all your carbonation while you're gaming. And it was easy to open with one hand. Oh, I loved it. I miss that stuff. I think they still make some kind of energy thing, but... Hey, no gamer fuel. How are we supposed to fuel our gamers in this economy? Rip. Rip, I say. I don't know. A anytime I latch onto a product, it's pretty much a guarantee that it's gonna be like, I'm just gonna die off before long. Cause like all my favorite stuff, I would just get like, oh my God. Uh, I've definitely said it on here, but Bolt 24 was like my favorite drink. Oh, wait a minute. I see you're supposed to, Oh, you gotta knock it along that side. Okay. There we go. That's not super intuitive, but I'll take it. Um, but yeah, I loved Bowl 24. It was a, it was like half stevia, half real sugar, watermelon, salt. They have Gatorade Fit now, which is effectively the same thing, but it's all stevia. And that, I don't like. I really am not a fan of stevia. It tastes pretty gross. Personally. Well, yeah, a mixed berry Bolt 24, man. And there was a point where Ollie's, which is this um, outlet store, it's where I got those almonds, that's near me, they, uh, they got a bunch of Bolt 24, which was awesome, because A, I could get 12 packs of Bolt 24, and I had like several 12 packs, like a big stack that I slowly worked through for ages. Ah, but I finally finished them off. Um, 
But, yeah, it also meant that, you know, it's going to the outlet stores because it's, it's no good. Anymore. They're not gonna sell it anymore. Don't cry. And yeah, sometimes I'll still get a Gatorade fit and be like, huh, it's just not as good. Um. But yeah, I would say peanut butter pretzels would probably be another good application for this. Or this would be another good app. Wow, what? Look at this little guy. Ah, ah, look at the kitty cat. I, I mean, it says bad. That does not. He's got bad wings, but that's a kitty cat face. You can't trick me. Bats do not have kitty cat faces. They got big old schnozzes. You ever seen a bat? You got a fat, fat schnoz. Uh, a few months ago, I was like walking. I don't remember where I was going. I it, I don't walk around too much because there's not too many sidewalks in my town and it's usually way too hot. But I was like, I think I was just walking to the Dunkin' Donuts for a coffee. And so I could like get some vitamin D. Because again, don't get a lot of sunlight. Uh, but I saw on the, on the sidewalk, there was a little bat. It was the middle of the day and he was just curled up on the sidewalk. And I was like, what? What are you doing? I didn't touch him. Don't touch bats. All bats have rabies, at least in the United States. So don't touch them, but I used like my, the bottom of my water bottle and I just kind of nudged to see if he was still alive and he he reacted. But yeah, I don't know what was up. I think he might have just fallen out of a... Because it was underneath a tree, but it was in like the bright sunlight. But um, yeah, he, he probably was like sleeping in the tree and fell out or something. I hope he was okay. I didn't see him again, so either he uh, got away and is okay, or like dog ate him. I don't know, but yeah. R.I.P. that guy. Well, that didn't help me. I know, yeah. Yeah. Ah. <sighs> I don't know, if I had like some kind of way to like pick him up and at least put him on the grass in the shade so he wasn't just baking in the sun, I would have, but at the time I did not have anything with me. And I wasn't gonna go barehanded handling a freaking bat. That would be a very, very stupid idea. No, no, no! Oh. I almost did the exact same thing again. Because uh, for those of you who don't play Kirby, you can push up, you can jump, and then um, push up to inflate and float for a while. Eventually he will like run out of air and fall. It's not forever, but you can do it for a while. But if he has something in his mouth, because he sucks somebody up, uh, he can't do that. So if you fall with something in your mouth, you gotta quickly spit it out and uh, run. Run. Hmm. Well, I am stumped, honestly. I feel like I've gone everywhere in this life. I mean, I already beat the boss. I got that bonus area, so I feel like I should be able to move on, but I can't seem to move on. What is up? Ha ah, ah. ha! No, thank you. Oh yeah, I don't even have to. Usually the bosses will block you in, but in this case, he's only a mini boss as well. Nope. Thank you. Well, just, what do I do? Hmm. Because I've gone through the level. These just take me back into the levels. I 
I... Hmm. I'm gonna look up a walkthrough. Cause like, this isn't a case where it's like... I just really have no idea what they expect me to do now. and the amazing near walk through that's what I want polygon polygon no no polygon I always prefer polygons they have like really well done graphics and stuff Walkthrough. Oh, what? IGN doesn't even have an actual walkthrough. Guess we're going to Game Facts. Ooh, classic. Walkthrough is seven. this walkthrough set up, which is strange. Okay. Now I'd right and enter the door here. Second farthest door from the right. From here, head left. left, down left. Whoop. Sorry, I'm playing with one hand while I hold my phone with the- Ah! Ah! God, these guys are me. Down left. Down. Down. Okay, okay. I'm just gonna need to two hand it for a minute. No! No! My ability! Ah. That's fine, let's make it. Down. Actually. 
down. And enter the door... What did it say? On the south? Enter the south door? There's no south here, bud. It's left and right. It doesn't mean anything. Oh, he's rolling. Oh, he's pulling. Whoa! Oh! Oh, okay. Now we're in Cabbage Cavern, I see. Yeah, this is weird. It's actually kind of open world in a, a, some weird ways. Alright, just do that, because I can get up here and get these health items. Thank you. Which I believe was still a net gain. I think I s still got two more than I started with, so... Okay. So yeah, I don't know how I was supposed to re- I guess you just have to keep exploring everywhere. Yeah, very different Kirby game, just in terms of level design. Uh, uh. Uh. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, we're getting somewhere again. We're getting somewhere. I don't know if I want to go through there or not. Um. I feel like I'd want to go to the slightly harder one, right? Like, they wouldn't really put the, the one you want right out front. I don't know. I mean, they did add that, like, thing right at the beginning. Ah, right at the beginning of the last level, so... Maybe I shouldn't... shouldn't try and metagame it. Uh, uh. Ow! Okay, I gotta make it fast. Bye! And then we. Uh, uh. No! Ah! I can do this. I can do this. Hold on. Just gotta time it out correct. Go! We're going. Nope. No. I don't think I can make it. What happens if I... Ah! Ah! A sneaky guy! Oh, wait a minute. I see. Ah, I was supposed to trick him into... I see what they wanted me to do. Well, that's fine. I don't need to do it. Would be neat, though. Ah! Ah! Uh, I'm really dragging my feet on it, but I got to figure out my my travel plans for for the holiday season. I should have done it at the beginning of like last month, frankly, but I was just so busy with a bunch of other stuff. Um, but yeah, not really looking forward to that, especially. I don't know, it's gonna be weird how we're gonna work it out, because uh, my mom lives in Nebraska, and my dad and, I mean, most of my family lives in Washington, on the, the west side. So, um, apparently my mom bought a house in Chihuahua, which is north of Spokane, so that's the east side of Washington. And she wants it as, like, a vacation house, so her thought is to do the holidays there. And I'm like, I don't know... I can't... I mean, I'm already planning on flying to Seattle, so I don't know how it's gonna work. Hey, there we go. How that'll work. 
necessarily. Um, ooh, ooh, ooh. Come on, give me some one-ups. Give me some one-ups. Ah. But my thought was we can try. I would come in like a few days beforehand. And then if she rents me a car, I could drive. Chewila, but that's only if the weather is really good, and like at that time of year, it's like, ugh. It's kind of a crapshoot. But I'm gonna try and make it work, I guess. But in any case, I need to book my flights, so. It's just coordinating between a lot of people. What the? Hmm. Well, I did that. Was I supposed to do something else? I guess I was supposed to do something else there to find the map to open up other stuff. So I'm gonna have to go back through all of this. Woof, yeah. I'm starting to see why not a lot of people talk about this particular Kirby. Oh yeah. Well, that's the thing, is like I'm definitely I'm definitely gonna be in Seattle. Um I gotta coordinate that too, but, uh, I'm gonna try and maybe get to Chihuahua, but, like, I don't know. I don't know. It'll really depend on the weather, but even if I don't get there, you know, it'll, it'll work out. It'll work out. Guys, just uh, just romping. Just hanging out. I'm just hanging out. What? Nope, nope. Just like, I, uh, it went, mm, I don't know. It's just like, coordinating two, two holidays. I've only really like, just over the past few years, even reconnected with my mom and I'm like, I'm trying to make an effort to, to include her in plans and things. But also it's like, it's difficult. Especially like, trying to coordinate two families worth of stuff when already it's like, there's only so much traveling I can do, because even when I get someone paying for, like, my flights or, like, a rental car or whatever, it's like, I still gotta pay for, like, food and luggage and, like, I think it's expensive. It's still, like, a, you know, couple hundred bucks or more with all the incidentals every time, so. Gotta, gotta, gotta keep my budget, gotta keep my budget tight, keep it clean. Ah, snap. Oh, we got it. Do it. Hold on. There we go. I love to travel, but it's, 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 it's the traveling itself, fun. The set, the planning, the traveling, not as much for me, personally. I'm sure there's people who, like, that's their favorite thing ever, is to plan traveling, but, like, for me, it's just, like, a necessary evil for the fun of actually getting out there and doing it. Alright, let me just check this area with, like, a fine tooth comb. Make sure I don't miss anything this time. Um, 
didn't go in this door last time. Drink. Give me that drink. Thank you. Thank you. like where I went last time. Oh! oh. Who's this droopy dog? Box Boxer. Oh, jeez. Snapped on me. Ah, uh, ah, uh, no! Dude, I've never seen this design before. What a cool guy. I mean, he's not so cool. Beam me up. No! Oh. So yeah, it has been, I, I feel like I should address, um, oh, ad break is coming up. So actually, I will take a break and uh, see y'all in just a minute. All right, time to uh, take it to the curb again. Hold on, why is it? My hotkey is not working. There it is, that was the hotkey. I, yeah, it's been so long since I've streamed, so uh, I have forgotten my hotkeys in general. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go back this way because the walkthrough said not even to go through this door, but I was curious. But I was correct the first time to keep going. I'm sure whatever was through that door was either superfluous or for later. Yep. 
好。Ah, there's a black man. I don't trust them. I don't trust those black guys. Nope. Ah, oh, I did it again. This feels like such a boneheaded way to to uh lose a life in these games. Oop. Nope. Oh my God. Speaking of which. Uh, but yeah, haven't streamed in a while. I just. I don't know. I was just having a uh, a weird time mentally. Let's put it that. Oh my god! Again? Why am I? Why do I keep doing this? It's because these uh, these ledges are just so narrow that I'm like trying to get something done while also climbing around. Oop! No thanks. Okay. This can be, this can be tight. Ah, okay. Okay, they said here is where the next bit of map is, so I gotta, yeah, it's, that's it in there. So I gotta get over there. I think last time I was trying to and I got distracted. Whoop. Hey, 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 hey! Very rude, very rude, sir. Ha, ha, ha! Here we go. There we go. We fighting. Oh yeah, I just went down, but it's like I just need to go straight up to get to that. Oop. Oh my God! Oh, and that's a game over. Well, what we're gonna do. <laughs> and with the, the cheapness. Oh, well. That's fine. Oh, no, I have to go back? Oh. No, we're not. We're not accepting that. There we go. Boxing. Oh, good. I can just go straight up, though. Yeah. I don't know. I just, like, I, uh, on one hand, I was getting, like, more numbers doing fighting games. But on the other hand, I was not having a very fun time doing fighting games. It's not that it was bad. It's just that... The, the way I was doing them at the beginning that I was having fun with, uh, when, like, people started being supportive and, like, actually giving me help, like, uh, Mal, who helped me out a lot on those streams and I really appreciated, um, like, I don't know, I just felt like I couldn't keep up with doing daily, daily practice because I just was too busy with other stuff. And it was hard to be motivated to do daily practice because it was just like a lot of, a lot of uh, losing. And I know, I know, fighting in people's like, you lose so that you can win eventually, but it's like, I'm not necessarily looking to win, but I'm looking to at least have matches where like, I feel like I'm progressing and I didn't. And it was just, it just felt like such a slog. Hey, yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, I really appreciate the help you were giving me, but it's just like, I don't know. It it felt like, with fighting games, it felt like the progression was just gonna be so, so much work to be, at best, slightly above average, and it's, I don't know. I feel like I could do it at some point, but it would have to be like, part of my streaming stuff and not the, the whole thing, because, like, the the last few streams I did playing Guilty Gear, it was just, like, kind of grumpily, like, running through matches over and over, and it's like, while that's probably the best way to learn, it was not what I... It, it didn't feel like it was a very entertaining, um... and 
very entertaining uh, thing to stream. And maybe I'm wrong, maybe y'all were really enjoying watching that, but it's like, I just didn't feel, didn't feel all that happy about actually, like, doing it. So. Yeah, I know, I know. I just, it's not even that I'm, like, trying to come up with an excuse or anything, I'm just trying to, like, explain. And I'm still trying to unpack what it is that, like, wasn't working for me. Because, like, I still really like Guilty Gear, and if I open it up and play some, I'm having, I have a fun time. And I still really want to do tournaments eventually, but it's like... I don't know. I just, I, doing it as a stream... I guess, similar to, like, how... When... Uh, the reason I stream more than anything is because it gives me an excuse... It gives me an excuse to do some level of performance, which is pretty important to me as an actor to have some kind of outlet for that, even when I don't necessarily have a project going on. Um, and uh, it gave me a way to feel productive while gaming, which is, you know, good because I can't, I don't know, I, I just, in my brain, I can't justify, I've been so poisoned by hustle culture that I can't justify just sitting down and playing a game. Though, when they were doing that Eastward trial over the last weekend, I did play through a good portion of that just for fun, and you know what? It was great. And I will probably play more of that. But then, that's the thing. That's really, is when I was playing Eastward, I was just like, oh man, this would be great to stream, because that's all my brain can do is like it can't just enjoy something it has to be thinking of an angle for turning it into content and like yeah that wasn't a very good mindset and I'm still trying to break myself from it so I don't know a as always I'm trying really hard as a freelancer to compartmentalize my work and my play because it's really easy especially since you know so many people are able to make really good livings making content based on their hobby and making content as their hobby that um that in the back of my brain I'm always like there's a way to monetize this and that would be really cool as someone who doesn't make a ton of money and is very much addicted to attention of any kind but uh yeah I just really need to um look at the walkthrough again first off Left, down, 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 left. Uh, I don't. Okay, I. Th <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm gonna keep playing this particular. Cause looking at this walkthrough, you have to go to such specific areas and backtrack so much, and it's like that's a cool idea. Um, I, I think that's the big thing, is that when I stream, I, at least personally, the way I want to stream and the way that I want to, um, what I want to do on a stream, generally, is have some level of progress. And I think that's really what it was with the fighting games, is like, I will probably still play fighting games, like, not as, not streaming, but just for fun. Um... But, if I'm playing a game, um, uh, oh, how am I going to do this? I don't have, I don't have an X button. Uh, options, maybe? Hold on, I'll just open up something else to close that. Yeah, and then we can just back back out. Because I still, I, I'll still play a Game Boy Advance game, but I think that one is a little too obtuse. So yeah, with fighting games, it's like there isn't clear progression happening, so it's like kind of hard for me as someone like who wants to find some kind of progress in each stream to like go from to like show that I definitely like went further in a game to do that.
Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Is like, I don't expect to make money off of Twitch. I've gotten, like, one withdrawal of, like, 60 bucks, and that was cool. Uh, but I'm not planning on making this a career. Like, that. that's the thing, is that I know... Um, I've looked into it I for quite a while. I did a lot of research, and the reality is if you want to make a living streaming, you have to be a very particular type of streamer who focuses on one particular game, are able to do it in a very entertaining way or to a very high level of skill, and you have to put a lot of time and effort into marketing off stream. Like, you have to basically spend, like, a you got to be full time just like making content off of Twitch to funnel towards Twitch to like try and get that revenue. And in reality, Twitch is not should not be your platform for a variety of reasons. You should definitely diversify platforms, but also because it's supplementary. Right. It's like something like you can live stream on top of other content that you focus on and people who like your other content will come to that. And it's not a bad supplement, but it's not what your pure focus should be unless you're willing to put in that full-time work and just, like, being a full-time streamer doesn't necessarily mean you stream constantly. It means that you put all of your time into directing people to your stream. So, uh, we are going to play... Let's play one of Super Mario Advances, I think. These I played all the time as a kid. Uh, we'll just play the original. Super Mario Bros. 2! In fact, I should change my category. But yeah, that's the thing, is like, in the back of my brain, I'm always like, I should figure out a way to monetize this. But in reality, I'm probably not going to. I'm not gonna be able to make like a decent amount of money. And I should just do it for fun. But then it becomes a thing of like, well, if I'm just doing it for fun, maybe I should just play the games on their own rather than stream them. Streaming them is just like a means to feel like I'm somehow being productive when I'm not, really. I'm still just playing a game and I'm getting myself out there a tiny bit, but like not in any significant way. Um, Twitch app, there it is. Yeah, I've been, I've been off for so long that I forgot where I put my Twitch app. Uh, creator mode. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta change my category. Um, what is this? Super Mario Advance 1. Advance. That's the one. There we go. Okay. Uh... Yeah, and I appreciate you guys watching. And I'll probably still do it no matter what because it's like, I enjoy streaming a lot. The, the reason I took a break and why I end up taking a lot of breaks, like at least once a year I'll take a several month break, is because like, um, I'll go with Princess, she's got the hover. She's got that hover move. I love the soundtrack to this game. So, frankly, I remember, um, I don't remember what I was doing, like, a, I was doing a marathon of, like, all the classic Mario games, and this one was the one that I had, like, the most fun with. Mario 3 was also pretty good. Um, but this was the one where I was like, this game's really good. It's very creative. It's got a lot of interesting things going on. I guess my problem is that I, I was looking at other streamers who seem to be doing successful, successfully, and I was like, they all are doing the same stuff. They're performing in the exact same way. They have, while they have a different brand, they have the same persona happening. And I just wasn't, I don't know, I just wasn't super interested in doing that. Um, hopefully that was the correct spot to do it. Yes, give me that mushroom. Get some coins. Right, this one has voiceover. And in fact, that was something uh, when Charles Marnet uh, left, left as Mario, people were pointing out, it's like he did a bunch of voices for all the bosses 
in this game. Um, which I never noticed because I'd always have the sound off. My, my parents would be annoyed if they were hearing a lot of this. But uh, yeah, a lot of voice lines that the original didn't have because the NES couldn't hold it, but the Game Boy just barely could. So you got a lot of fun, fun voice lines. Oh, no! I was trying to float. I did it wrong. Uh, is there a reason to play this over the NES version? Uh, like I just said, it's you get you get updated graphics, and they are really pleasant to look at. Um, you get uh uh you get unique voice lines that weren't in the original on NES. Um. Otherwise, no. It's it's like it's a lot of aesthetic difference, but the the whole point of um can I get another mushroom? Will they give it to me? The whole idea behind the Super Mario Advance games were just they wanted to port all the NES and SNES Mario games to to GBA and do just like a little bit extra, you know. So this is, honestly, this was how I played most of these games for the first time, because I didn't have an NES. Every now and then I get to play somebody's SNES, and I played, like, a little bit of Mario World. But, like, this was my introduction to a lot of the classics. And I loved it. There we go. Okay, I remember now. It's not just, it's not just jump and, no, actually it is just jump and hold. Huh. Ooh. Yeah, also there's stuff like that. Little things like the... The big, I don't remember if that was in the original. Because again, I played this version a lot more than the others. Uh, the SNES, the NES version. But, um... I don't know. I would personally always go for this one. Because it just looks nicer. And it feels nicer. And it's the one I'm more familiar with. But I don't think anything else is majorly different. I'm sure you could find... Uh, why am I just running, jumping over there? Foolishness. Foolishness. I believe this is where... Yeah, okay, here's the trick. You, uh, yeah! Also, there's like that. New animations and stuff. Just, just cute little things. Oh, the shell! Whoops! <laughs> Went a little ahead of it. Choose a player. That's probably Charles Martinet. Thinking about it. Ah... <sighs> gonna miss, miss him as Mario. I am very interested to see what he does. Maybe he'll show up in uh, more Nintendo Directs now that he's the Mario ambassador. Um, yeah, he. everything I've heard is like he's just a super cool, super nice guy. And like he, he was still, I don't know how long he had been acting or like trying to be a professional actor, but like Mario was, like, one of his first voiceover roles, and, like, he just nailed it right out of the park. Right at the jump. It was exactly... I mean, th 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 now that's, like, such a dream role for so many people. This, like... This character, but... For... At the time, it's like, he had never heard of that. He didn't play video games. It's interesting how many voice actors who are, like, huge for being in video games don't actually play video games. Like, Jim Cummings has, hasn't played video games, and he's in a ton of stuff. Um, the ninjas! Ah, oh, I love the ninjas. Ah, crap, I need to... Hold on, come back in. Yeah, I mean, they have, with this, they have all four of them. I think it was just so that they could... Oh, right, it disappears! If you try and leave and come back. Ah. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's... It's a bit... Ooh. It's a bit of an odd addition, but it's like, they probably wanted to finish out the set of all four. And not for nothing, but uh, they... They don't have to do any licensing stuff, since this is a first-party game. Like, I feel like that's a major reason that they wanted to have these ones in there. Because it don't cost them nothing. Except for, I guess, you know, probably some man hours to get it, uh, get it set up. Ooh, ah. Oh, I forgot how kind of slip slidey the controls can be sometimes in this one. Oh, can I do it? You gotta time it out right. 
There we go. Yeah. Uh, there is a secret over here. Oop. Ah, dip. Yeah, it's like, I'm real surprised. Ah, oh, I messed it up. You gotta kind of let it cook for a second. Nope, wasn't long enough. Ah, oh, crap. Well, let's, uh, I can't remember if you can come back in. Okay. Ooh, watch out. Oh, got me. Yeah, I'm still surprised, uh, like, the NES doesn't have Mega Man or Contra or, like, Castlevania. Like, some of the, like, major titles. Ooh, okay, there we go. Um, so the fact that they're doing some obscure stuff. Like, granted, it is cool that they're doing, like... Uh, oops. No, no, go through the hole. Go through the hole. There we go. It's more, um... Like, it's cool that we're getting some, like, Japan exclusives that we never got in the U.S., but also, like, I don't know, man. I'd, I'd like a bit, uh, I'd like some more of the classics, please. Especially the ones I never played, right? Uh, is Ninja Gaiden in the pack? I think I played that one there. Birdo! See that? Birdo's even got a voice here. That's fun. It's very fun. Woo! The voice acting is not great, but it's that kind of corny that it's a very Saturday morning cartoon in a way that I find it very entertaining. Bow. Uh, that's fun. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's probably it, but also, like, I don't know. The packs like that kind of frustrate me. Because, like, so often they'll be, like, barely anything they give you, and then... <sighs> oh, yeah, the Genesis. I haven't really dipped into the Genesis collection. What's in there? Eh. I'm just gonna... <laughs> gonna mash my way through this. Let's take a detour real quick after I get into this next bit. Come on, come on. Anything? Hey, there's something. Whoops. Okay. I'm gonna take a quick detour and see what's in the Genesis pack. Yeah! That was frustrating to me because I had, as you can see in my collections here, I had bought uh, Sega Genesis Classics um, only like a couple months before they did the Genesis pack. And I think it has a lot of the same games in it. Uh, wait, hold on. I want to uh, create a suspend point. There we go. Bow. And then, where was I? Yes. Then we go in here. What all do they have in the Genesis collection? Yeah, the 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 fast forward, fast reverse, all that collection or uh, functions are very good. Let's see. Sega. Hmm. All right, from the bottom, we got Strider. Okay. Streets of Rage 2, which I'll take. I always, I played Streets of Rage 3 because it was on this, like, we had a Genesis and we had this, like, pack. It was, like, the Super 6 pack. And it had, like, Sonic, Streets of Rage 3, I believe Shinobi, the, the first Shinobi. Um... A motorcycle game, it wasn't Road Rash. It was something else where you could like upgrade your your motorcycle. Um I think X-Men. And a sixth one that I don't remember. But uh yeah, I played a lot of Streets of Rage 3. I could never beat it though. Sonic 2, classic. Shinobi 3, pretty good. 
Shining Force haven't played, but I've been meaning to. Rice Star! Oh my god, I love Rice Star. Mmm, I'll have to stream that sometime. Fancy Star 4. Fancy Star is pretty good. Musha, don't know it. Gunstar Heroes, that uh, looks pretty good. Golden Axe, that was what was the sixth thing. Golden Axe. Oh, that's, that game was so fun. Love Golden Axe. Uh, Echo the Dolphin. I could never get far in Echo the Dolphin. It's, it's, it's good, but it's like, it's hard to, uh, hard to navigate. Dr. Ro Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. This one was so hard as a kid, and I don't think I can get much farther now. I don't know. I'm just not good at setting up the combos in Puyo Pop, which is all it is. Sword of Vermilion is one of the few RPGs that I really adore because it's an action RPG, and it has the, like, 3D kind of, like, was it tank control, like, NES 3D environments? It's hard to describe, but when you see it, you'll recognize it if you know what it is. And it's, oh man, I love Sword of Vermilion. I uh, haven't played this. Been meaning to play this. I know it's it's classic. I uh, haven't played this Castlevania. Or see, we have versions of Castlevania and Contra, but they're the Genesis ones instead. Dynamite Heady is weird. There's like another one that's like almost identical to it. I never never quite understood what its deal was. Elder Beast is okay. It's just like an auto-scrolling beat em up. I think it was just like a launch title, so people played it because of that. This game is very cute. I have not played a lot though. Don't know this one. Don't know that one, but I believe Alien Soldier is one of the ones that wasn't in the any uh the US before. Don't know you. Don't know you. I still haven't played Shining Force. Sonic Spinball would be so good if it had better controls. It has terrible, terrible physics and controls, so you just end up spinning your wheels forever. But I do like a pinball game. Space Harrier 2. I haven't played it. I've played some Space Harrier 1. Yeah, see, Mega Man. Again, it's like we have versions of Mega Man Contra Castlevania, just not on the NES. Comic Zone. I don't know if I was playing Comic Zone wrong, but... I could never get very far because you got damage when you hit stuff. It would take your health when you punched. So even if you didn't get hit, if you hit something else, you would be damaged. And that was... Uh, I don't get it. Earthworm Jim? Haven't actually played. I've played Earthworm Jim 3D on the N64, which I hope comes to that. It's not a good game, but I will play the hell out of some Earthworm Jim 3D. Because I played it a lot as a kid. Beyond Oasis. Very spooky. I don't know this one. Alicia Dragoon. That is some awesome box art, but I'm not familiar. Street Fighter 2. Classic, but, you know, fighting games. I would I would like to get into Street Fighter 2 a little bit, because, like, if I was going to get into Street Fighter, I think that's where I'd want to start, just the classic. Also, I found out recently... The reason Street Fighter 1 wasn't popular is because the arcade cabinet had two huge buttons that were pressure sensitive. So to punch, you would have to actually punch the button as hard as you wanted to punch. Which, uh, yeah, a lot of arcades didn't want people hurting themselves, so they didn't, uh, didn't go with that. I've heard of Alien Storm, I haven't played it. Columns, classic. Not a great puzzle game, but not terrible. Golden Axe 2, also good. Virtual Fighter is silly, but I like it. Pulse Man. Don't know if I've heard of this one. Kid Chameleon is awesome, but there's a spot where you get soft locked. I don't know if I just missed something. They made a version without the pressure button. That's good. That's good because yeah, I can't imagine I can't imagine that going over super well in most arcades. Yeah, Kid Chameleon, there's a point like pretty far in it's like several several worlds like a couple hours play where i just i can't go any further and it's like at the beginning of a level and it just i there's nowhere to go no matter what option you take so i don't know if i was just missing something or what but i gotta try that one again because i liked it but it's yeah that happened every time i played it flicky classic the revenge of shinobi this is the one that i played this one scared me because the sound design and the music is very spooky and, like, ethereal and unfamiliar to me. Especially as a kid, it was, like, 
it was just very creepy and spooky. I like I like it, and I have like deep memories of it. But I was always like, eh, I don't want to play this one. Don't, I think I've heard of this one, but I don't know what it's about. Ghouls and Ghosts, classic, very hard but very good. And I have no idea what this one's deal is, but I like that early CG sword, that very, very early texture, those super shiny smooth early CG program textures. All right, let's go back to the thing. Um, But yeah, I think the only way that I can really, that I'm really going to be able to enjoy streaming is if I... I'm gonna have to pretty much always be a variety streamer, even though I know it's... If you... if you want to be successful... Oh, right, I gotta... Uh, no, how do I get to the suspend menu? Bup. There we go. Even though I know that you kind of have to focus in and specialize rather than diversify if you want numbers, I just, I'm not going to be able to enjoy doing that because every time I've tried to specialize, I just end up miserable because I have too much focus and that's just not how my brain works. I think I did it in the wrong spot. Yeah. Oh, wait. Nope. Right on top of it. That works. What? What? Ah, I didn't get that there. Oh no. Is this where the Phantos comes in? Oh, I hate the Phantos. Uh, they're scary. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Ah! No. Don't hurt me. Ah! Gotcha. Bam. Whoops, sniff it. Oh, oh, oh. Got him. I got a blast my way through here that might not have been close enough oh no that works uh, I guess there's these coins as well which is just like a little bonus thing but that's 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 a difference oh that little extra squish animation that's nice Bam, there we go. Give me the heart. Thank you. What? Mm, okay. But yeah, I'm gonna have to be a variety streamer because that's that's really what kind of stream I wanna make to begin with. The kind of streams I like watching. I don't like watching people who just play the same game over and over again, because when I watch if I want the same game, I will go and like, play that game. I, I If I'm interested in a specific game, then I'm unlikely to want to watch someone else play it. Um, I would much rather have, like, anytime I see somebody, it's like, oh, they're playing this game. I'm, I've, I've, I'll check out that stream later. That's, uh oh, I think that was a bad idea. Yep, yeah. oh, it's down there, no! Oh. Well, all right. Uh, and I need to retain the right to veto a game like I did on this stream. It's like, that Kirby game, it's not bad, but it doesn't feel correct for the stream. Or like how I had to give up on Frog Gun at the last bug. <sighs> I still feel, still so annoyed that, about that game where I, I got to the last boss, but then the exact, the last hit for the last boss, the only way to do it is just some ludicrous platforming. Hmm. Maybe someday. Maybe someday, but yeah, I just, I'll reserve the right to, to switch to a different game. You again. Whoop. No, oh, dude. Give me the eggs. Give me the eggs. Whack. Oh, no. Right, they they throw it at like a, a perfect diagonal. Unless you jump, and then they throw it at an arc. Ah! Oh, I'm out of practice in this one. I've, I don't think I ever beat this as a kid, but I definitely got 
I, I played the first few worlds that I could survive through a lot. I did beat it on stream before, though. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if I'll continue with this next stream or not. I just... I'm gonna finish out this stream with this. Because this is a game that... I know I like and that I know I can get some decent progress on. Hmm? Oh, wait. Actually, no. That, that works. Right, the cherries are random. Or wild. I believe they're called. What? What? Where? Ooh, got some stuff going on. Look at that. Oh, nope. Oh, yeah. That's the thing I forget with this one, is that while you get a little more control with your air movement, with the floaties, uh, you're also a little slipperier. Not by much, but there's like a little bit of slip that you gotta really stay on top of. Okay, I believe we have to take this up here. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Wrong spot. Yeah, I was never good with the potions. I would always... I always wasted them. <laughs> what else we got? What else we got? Ooh. Oh, oh. Ah, ah. <laughs> well. How about that? And just do a little bit of zip. And, oh my goodness! Okay, okay. Ah, I am a champion. I can survive. I appreciate, this is something new that they've implemented since the last time I was using OBS.Live, but uh, it has a little pop-up telling you when you're in an ad, so that's very helpful for me to know, you know, maybe when I should take a break or... Or uh, whether or not y'all can even hear what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, basically, in the three years I've been streaming, I, I believe more than three, yeah, it was around after my birthday, um, in 2020, which was pre-pandemic, so I'm not, even though I did start streaming, like, I only really got a couple streams in before the pandemic actually hit, I was a pre-pandemic streamer still technically so i got that going for me not that i have a problem with anybody who streamed during the pandemic like why not if you can handle it like lord knows everybody else was bored so thanks for providing content um but oh oh what's this what's this area oh <laughs> Ah, uh, ah, oh, dip. I wanted to throw it up there. Well, let's find out. Nothing. Yeah, no oh. We're gonna rewind that. In fact, we're gonna rewind to here. Ha ha! Eh. Yes, I know it's cheap. No, I don't care. Ooh, there we go. That's what I wanted to do. Although this might still be the wrong spot. No, there it is. Perfect. Basically, the main thing I've learned streaming for a few years is a pretty good sense for what game will make for a good stream or not. 
That is, but here's the thing. Sometimes I will tell while I'm playing it, and sometimes I won't tell until I've been playing it for a little while on stream, and I can tell, like, oh, I'm not having a great time. It's not working out as well as I wanted it to. So, it is, uh, yeah, reserving the right to switch out a game will be helpful. Because if it's going to become a game where I'm just looking up a walkthrough the whole time, or I'm, like, not, uh, not having a lot to say, which was really the thing with Guilty Gear Strive, I was having a good time, but it's also, like, I just didn't, couldn't think of anything to say after a while. And I, and people like gave suggestions of like, oh, you could talk about this or that, but it's like, in reality, most of the matches, it's like, I would, during the match, just kind of say like, yeah, I noticed that I did that wrong, I did that wrong, oh, I'm still mashing, I need to focus on that. It's like, I would just be repeating myself over and over and over, and it's like, well, I'm sure there were some people who would find that compelling. I personally don't feel like that's, uh, I don't, I don't know, that doesn't feel very entertaining to me, so I didn't really like it as a stream, at least in that way. I will probably continue to practice and learn Guilty Gear off stream, and when I'm better, I will stream it again, because I will have more to say. But I think it'll be more like a check-in thing. Like every month or two, I'll just do a stream and be like, alright, here's what I learned in Guilty Gear over the last, you know, however long. I think that will make... That's my favorite of the the boss lines. They couldn't think of... They couldn't think of anything more clever to say, so they're just like, Here, have some bombs! That's... Great work, Charles. Fantastic work. Get him, get him. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> get him. Right. I also like all these Lego walls. I think in they were just kind of like general blocks before, so having like this extra little bit of detail, that's nice. It's nice. It's also I'm probably gonna stream less because before I was like I'm gonna do three days a week. For now, I'm just gonna do Friday. I'm gonna do a stream on Friday, and I might add another one. Um once I'm more settled back in, but as it is, I should do this so that it stops making that noise. Uh, so close. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, that's the thing, is like, looking at YouTube, some of my favorite YouTubers who have been doing it for years and have like a medium, a medium-sized audience, you know, a few, you know, a few thousand, tens of thousand people, maybe. They might have the, like, the silver play button, but they haven't gotten their gold. Um, like, those are my favorite YouTubers because, like, they have enough people who are dedicated to, like, actually interact with, so they have, like, a bit of a community. But they're not so big that they just have to be like, I can't read comments because there's just too much and it's just ridiculous. And it's like, yeah. That's the thing. I honestly wouldn't want to be a giant streamer because I watch like Hasanabi sometimes and I'm like, oh, he has like tens of thousands of viewers and it's like, how do you even handle chat? Like I see his chat and it's like just constantly blasting through with some of the stupidest stuff. And I'm like, what is the point? You can't interact with any of those people on a meaningful level. And it's like, get that bag, I guess, but it's like, in terms of content, I think it's, you know, there's no really that different from, like, um, oh, where does this one go? Here? Yeah! But like, yeah, I wouldn't want that. I would like more viewers for sure, but like, I wouldn't want it to get to the point where I just couldn't like actually interact with people or talk to chat. Ideally, having like, you know, a handful of chatters 
is like my favorite streams because it's like I have someone to bounce off of. I have like more content for when I'm like having trouble thinking of commentary. And like it feels like, I don't know, it feels fun. It feels like a party. Because my whole thing, especially if you watch my earlier streams, I would have everything set up with the camera on the side because my concept was that it w I was trying to create this environment like we're all hanging out on the couch together playing games. Like, I'm playing a game, and y'all are watching, and we're hanging out. Like, that's the vibe. I didn't want it to be, like, a parasocial thing, necessarily, but just, like, you know, make things feel cozy, feel comfortable, feel friendly. I don't want it to feel like I'm the, the lord of this domain of hundreds of followers who are obsessed with me and want me to... None of that. That's not what I want. I want to you know, be able to actually, like, s interact off of you guys and, like, have a reason for it to be live, but also, um, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm just kind of rambling. Just in general, I'm, I'm kind of just, like, I don't know why I keep stopping. She says the same thing every time now. <laughs> I should have saved that. Yep, I should have saved that. Come on. Come on. Come on. Wait. Whoop. Wait. What is that second line? I can't quite tell what she's saying. I'll have to listen next time. Because, yeah, that is... Despite being the third time we fight Birdo, there are still quite a few Birdo fights left. Hmm? Nope, that's nothing. Ding, ding, ding. Hey! No? Oh, I guess not. I thought this, the cherries were wild. But yeah, I am more than content to be a small streamer. Uh, medium range is the highest I'd want to go. If it got to the point where I was a large streamer, I honestly probably would not like it very much more than anything. Like, I just want... Uh, I, I guess the larger thing is that I have a very different philosophy when it comes to this kind of thing. Let's Plays as well. Which is that Let's Plays, when they were invented by Slow Beef, you know, by, by a, at least, like, according to most, um, according to most accounts, Slow Beef on the Something Awful Forums created the uh, Let's Play. At least he was the first to call it a Let's Play. The concept probably existed in some small way or another. But the whole point of Let's Plays originally was more of an academic thing. Like, it was supposed to be... It was in a time when it wasn't easy to just get any game. Nowadays, you can get pretty much anything on any console. You can get on PC. You can emulate very easily. But back in the day, it was like stuff like Danganronpa. Like, Danganronpa pretty much would not have been that popular in the West if it weren't for Let's Plays on the Something Awful forums. Like, showing off what it was. Because that's the idea. It's like, let's play. Like, let's see what this thing is about. Let me show you a game I love, and let me, like, really break down what I love about it. It wasn't just this idea of, like, let me just play a game and act like an idiot on top of it. Or, let's, um, you know... Let me do all this while doing a million, like, ad read promos like it's a wrestling show or something. So that's really what I want. I want to be able to show you guys games that I like or try out games that I might like. And I want to treat it, like, academically. Like, I want it to be for the love of games, not just for the love of maybe making a living off of playing games. Like, that's not... That's never why I wanted to stream. Um... So, yeah, that's pretty much going to be my point. I'm going to be a variety streamer and... Damn the numbers. I don't care. And it's not even like, I don't care because it's like, I know they're not going to be high. It's like, no, I literally just don't care about them anymore. I... It took me, like, two plus years to get even $60 out of this. It's not going to be a profitable thing unless I want to do it full time, which I don't. I already spent enough time marketing just like my for my acting, which is my actual job, 
I don't want to also make like my hobby be that too and just have two full-time jobs about it. It's like, in general, I would rather, and this is how I feel about YouTube as well at this point, um, because for a while I was like just making YouTube videos and it was a lot of, it was a lot of movie reviews and unboxings because it's like I was getting a lot of video games, or board games at the time. Uh-oh. Is that gonna work? Oh, okay. I missed out on the coins, but that's okay. Um... But the thing was, it's like, it just wasn't... It wasn't content I was very proud of. Right? It's like, I, it was a lot of work. Like, I would spend at least a couple days a week doing the editing and the filming, and it was like... It was just a lot to keep on top of. And I was always behind on, like, movies I'd seen. Because I still see a lot of movies. But, like... Um, oh, jeez. Oh, these guys. Flames. Flames! Watch out. Okay. Um... But... Yeah, it was just very low effort content. It's like, if I'm gonna do this stuff, if it's gonna be a decent amount of effort no matter what, I should be putting in more effort than this, right? Because, like, I was just getting lazier and lazier with the reviews. Early on, I was, like, doing all sorts of, like, custom graphics and interesting, or at least what I thought was interesting editing. Um, and, like, I was putting in a lot of time and effort, but I just, like... They would get, like, a couple dozen views at best, so it was like, uh, woo, nobody's watching, why am I even putting in this much work? And then it's like, once you get into that mindset, then it's all gonna suffer, and you're not gonna do good at all. And it's like, at that point, you should step back and think, like, why, why am I doing this? Why, is this what I want to do with this? And the answer is no. There's a lot of things that I would love to do in terms of making content, but not... It isn't that, and it isn't... Oh man, that's where the Bitcoin was. It tricked me, I thought it'd be the side with the, the guys. Whoop, whoop. Oh, but maybe this is good. Hmm. Oh, flame birdo. I'm gonna finish you up. That's a new voice line. I hope she says the same end line because that's... I wanted to know what she was saying. Ooh, oh man, she's really going ham on those Ooh, eggs. <laughs> ham and eggs. You get it? Oh, yeah, I have a mil... I literally have like hundreds of ideas in a note on my phone for like much higher effort, like, YouTube stuff. And it's like, I'd much rather do that, because it will be more creatively fulfilling, and then, like, send people from that over to these streams. Um, so, that's what I'm gonna do. A lot of it's gonna be, like, media analysis stuff. I had one. The, the one I'm gonna do first, frankly, is gonna be an idea Coco had, so I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna say here, but I will say in the video, Coco is gonna get a credit for that because it's a great idea. And I'm already, I'm very excited to do it, but it's gonna be some work. But it'll be worth it because it will actually be something that I feel like I'll be happy about making. And that's more than anything. Like even when I was doing, if you guys go back a few years ago, I did a series called Iggy Kids Whiteboard Games, which was basically just like how to play different board games. They, they were board game tutorials, right? And, but I did a lot of like work to make them like fancy. I'd use like, I, d I drew out stuff on whiteboards to like have visual elements and it was a lot of work, but it was super fun. But even then I was not, I don't know. I, I like at the time I felt like this feels very low effort. Like I'm just like telling people how to make, how to play board games, you know, that's not anything that big. But, in retrospect, I've gone back and watched some of those. Not only do they get pretty decent views, but, like, I'm pretty happy with how they came out. I would recommend, if you guys haven't watched those, go check it out. It's on my YouTube channel. 
It's labeled as season one because I was planning on making another. Frankly, I was planning on just making them in perpetuity, but I was like, I'll just do one really big one and say that that's the finale of season one. Oh, oh, that was weird. Did you see that? It's like I pulled out the heart, got hit, but then the heart activated right after, so I got healed right back up. Hmm. Interesting. Let me uh pin that. I forgot how to do pins. Oh, there it is. Marker. Uh, in fact, I should turn the light on. <laughs> it got dark. That's the thing is I'll usually start right right before dusk and then uh it will slowly get dark in here and then by the time I notice it's been dark for a while and I'm just staring at this bright screen. Well it's not that bright, but my eyes are pretty sensitive to light. Try not to burn them out. But uh yeah, I would I would recommend that series, you know. I I, I definitely started getting lazy towards the end because I was just like they were just getting bigger and bigger in scope, and I was getting very, very tired. Because I, I was doing them all at a clip, and I would started with, like, such enthusiasm, and then I was like, huh, I gotta keep going. I gotta keep going. But yeah, there's some really good jokes in there. Uh, my, I'm glad that the one that has the best views is the one that I think is, like, the funniest. It's really only one, like, particular- it's leading up to, like, a single punchline. And I don't think it's, like, that clever of a punchline, but I think that my actual, like... My performance of it was very solid. I'm still super happy with how I performed the joke. And it's not a very long video, and it got really good views, which is awesome. Because, yeah, I definitely put a lot of effort into that one. But, uh, yeah, there's only, I think, I don't even remember how many I did, like, only, like, a handful. Twelve, maybe? I don't know. It was, it was a while ago. I also did, just going down the, the videos that, uh, a video I wish had more views is a Zelda sequelitis response number four million. Um... Which I think it didn't get as many views because uh, the thing is I did a lot of research because it's not just about responding to Aaron Hansen's um, sequelitis on Ocarina of Time. Uh, that is a big part of it still, but it is also uh, a big part of it is responding to people's responses because a lot of people hated his. Ocarina of Time video, as well he knows, like he even says in the, his sequelitis video, which I've watched even before I had done that, I've watched it so many times, it's one of my comfort series, his sequelitis. Anybody who hasn't watched it, it's very, it's very good critique of game design. Some of the humor, I mean it was 2014, so some of the humor is, not, uh, he uses some terms that are not exactly, are no longer customary, if you know what I mean. Um, and it's every time I watch again, I'm just like, ooh, I wish he hadn't said that. It really dates this, and just makes it really uncomfortable to, that, that part just is pretty uncomfortable. Oof. Oh boy. Oh god, the Phanto mask in the background. That made it extra scary, because the Phantos, like, everybody knows the Phantos are terrifying. All right, I'm not breaking new ground by saying that, but, oh, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Whew, okay. I thought I was stuck for a second. Um, and if you listen, it does have like a sound effect when the Phantos activate. But yeah, having that mask in the back adds so much more fear. Woohoo! Made it. I'm gonna add a stream marker, actually. There was a lot going on just now. Um, but yeah, I think my performance could have been better, and I think there's definitely parts... Like, I've gotten some comments on it that I'm like, yeah, there's some parts in there that are, like, superfluous that I, I added, and... 
there's definitely some parts that um, I could have explained a lot better. Or they were really unnecessary. Like, there's some parts that, like, I don't even really remember what the point I was trying to make was. So, I would probably do it different now. But, I think it came out pretty good. I think it, it has some good funny bits. And I think it's a pretty... Pretty good breakdown of why a lot of the responses are kind of uh, not great. Like they're uh, in in general, the problem with most of the responses I found was that they weren't really engaging with the point. Too often they were, and and I in this case this might be like too harsh of a term, but they were kind of tone policing. They were saying they a lot of them their criticism was that he was saying things too he was treating things too objectively, and it's like, there's no point where he... If you're ready to get toasted. If you're ready to get toasted. That's another good line. Oh, jeez. Okay, I think I only have to hit him three times, but... Ooh! Uh, ooh, the flames! Hold on, I'm gonna go from the top. I was being very sloppy with that. Also, I want to hear that voice line again. Okay, there we go. Let's heal up. All right, yeah, now listen to this voice line. If you're ready to get toasted. That's also Charles. I'm pretty sure he's all of the male bosses. Oh, and the scream. <laughs> Damn. It's really hard, because, like, the angle that the fire comes at is... Ooh. Ah. Is a little weird. Impossible. Ugh. It's so nice. I like it a lot. Um, but yeah, too many people. It's like I, my problem was they're basically like their problem was with his tone, right? Their, their problem was with how he presented his points, and that's fair. All right, you can have umbrage with that, but that doesn't invalidate his points. I, I would say that there were certainly points there. It's like, some of it I agree with, some of it I don't. One of the, I mean, I'd say go watch it, because, like, I break it down pretty well. One of my bigger problems is, like, his idea of how puzzles work, and it's like, I don't know about that, but... Man, some of those responses were awful. Like, they really did not engage with his point at all. Like, one of them made me so, so mad because it was like a guy who just re reacts to videos basically, like that his YouTube channel is basically like he just watches stuff and then he like gives his opinions and it's kind of like a radio show the way it's um, presented. I did, I did take the time, like I actually have a playlist that I link to in the description of that video of everybody that I talk to, so if you want to watch their videos, you totally can, and I I recommend you should. You should get your own opinions. You shouldn't just take what I'm saying about it, obviously. Um, but, yeah, the guy, it's like, it frustrated me because the guy, like, his criticisms were so shallow because he watched the video once and he was just like, yeah, it's pretty good, it's funny, uh, animations are great. It's like, it's clear that he didn't really absorb that much of what, what Aaron was trying to say. And he just kept making this, the same joke about how the, oh, why didn't you mention the water temple? And it's like, I'm, I'm already taking myself back with this. But the, the, the reason Aaron doesn't mention the water temple is because the problems with the water temple, it's just a distillation of the problems with the rest of the game. It, here's the thing. I don't think Ocarina of Time is a terrible game. In fact, I like it. You know, I will probably stream it on here, in fact. I've been kind of itching to play it again. But it is, it is definitely not a masterpiece, right? Like, it's, it's impressive. We know that, like, 3D games can go, like, 2D franchises going into 3D went bad a lot. Like, Earthworm Jim 3D that I was talking about earlier, Donkey Kong 64. I like those games. But they're not good. They're very poorly designed. They're very cumbersome. Oh man, do I just have to like book it up top? Come on, book, 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 book. Fast, 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 faster. Yep. Ooh, there we go. Oh man, these 
vines are a little tricky because they kind of like let you woo-woo. There's like a very thin margin for uh, what is safe. Um, whoop! Oh, why didn't I throw that farther? That's what I wanted. Whoop. Yeah? Is this the spot for it? I'm gonna risk it. Uh-oh. Well, hopefully it wasn't over there. It probably was. Ah, dip. Ah, dip. But yeah, it's like... There are certainly some clunky things going on. It's not... It's not a terrible game. It is above average, for sure. But... Uh, it still very much shows its age at this point. Like... Th there are better 3D Zelda games. Like, I would even say, between that and Majora's Mask... Majora's Mask is a much more impressive game. If whether or not it's better... Uh, it's just a very different type of game. You know, they were doing trying to do very different things with it, and they were under very different constraints, so I don't think, even though that they are, like, you know, both N64 games, and they're, like, one is a direct sequel to another, I don't think you can really compare them to each other uh, in a lot of ways, because, like, w where it actually over... There's, there's not a ton of overlap in what they... What, they were trying to do there. I think I repeated myself there. This happens. I'm playing a game. I'm trying to think of ideas. I'm trying to sound intelligent. That's the lost cause. But you guys already knew that. Um. Uh. Bonk. Add a stream marker for that. Um. Generally, if I'm like pausing weirdly. I'm going to finish you up. If I'm weirdly pausing for a second, it's because I'm dropping the stream marker. Because I think I made a funny joke. And I don't have any mods, so I gotta do it myself. That's the one thing. I want to be, like, a big enough streamer that I can get some mods. Because that sounds like it would be very helpful. But, like, that's pretty much all I need. I, I don't really need to grow past that point. But, like, enough to have somebody be like, Hey, I'll, I'll help out while you're streaming. It's like, yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, it'd be nice for somebody else to, like, clip stuff when I say, or, you know, deal with, like, a troublemaker. What? Oh, should I breach that topic? Uh, oh! I'm just gonna rewind. Oh, rewind a little past that. Yes, I know it's being cheap. Here's the thing, as well. It's, like, similar to how Let's Plays are very different. I think... Like a Let's Play originally was meant to be, this is an exhibition, right? This is me showing off the game, in a way, and showing off, like, how I play it. So, that is how I play it. And I, don't, I think the controversy around rewind features and save states is stupid. I think if there's an easier version of a game that makes it so that more people can experience a game, I think that's a net good for the entire community. And if you disagree, I would recommend, uh, you're chilling out, <laughs> dude. Like, ah, so close to the triple seven. Um, like genuinely, you don't need to worry about how other people play games. Like there are some games where the difficulty is an integral factor. Integral factor, that's a tricky phrase to say. Um, like the Soulsborne games. Like, the, the, the thing with that, with those games, let me make sure I pick my words right here. The reason you can't put an easy mode in those games is because the entire core of the design is based around the difficulty. And the systems that make it difficult if you put in an easy mode, it would actively make it a different type of game. Which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing, and you could do. But you do have to recognize, if you're doing that, that it's like, those are different games. Much in the same way, I, I believe I've said this before on stream, but there is, um, there are three types of games. 
There is single player games, which are basically puzzles. Uh, there are two player games or two sided games, right? When I say player, it can mean a single player or it can mean a team of people acting as one side of a game. And then there's every other game. If you have three or more sides against each other, those games will be identical to each other. So similarly, if you have heart, if you have regular Soulsborns and you had an easy mode version, they would be fundamentally different games. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it also means that uh, the, the designers would be having to split their focus between, you know, making making the game that they want to make and making a basically a separate game that is aesthetically similar. And I don't think that that's a reasonable thing to request of them. They, they want to make a game that is really hard and the game is kind of about being very difficult. So I think they should be allowed to do that. I'd like to get into those games. They look very hard, but they look very fun as well. I like very hard games. I don't know, it's like, you guys see me rage at games that are like middling hard, right? Where I'm like so mad, it's like, that's not even that difficult. Um, but then like stuff like Hotline Miami, when I like went through that whole thing, I didn't even really get mad. I barely got upset. Even though that game is notoriously super ragey and difficult, but it's like, because I knew it was supposed to be that, and my expectations were set accordingly. Ah, no, no, go, no, no, ah! Um, it didn't upset me. Can I, oh, can I drop it down? Ah, oh, dude. This might not work out. No, oh. Butternut squash, all right. Let's go to the beginning of this area because I was unclear of what point of this area was. But, um, yeah, I like, I like difficult games. I like the Doom games. That's what I've wanted to do for Marathon. But, um, if I did, if I did Doom 2016 as a Marathon, I would need to practice it off stream a bit, because it's, ooh, it's tough. Ooh, it's a tricky one. Can I, how do I do this? I, oh. Did I do this? Hold up. Just in case. Hold on, we're gonna... Eh. Uh, no. I think I already did this one. I already got the mushroom. Go, 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 go! Oh. Can you climb the ladders with the bomb? I don't think you can. Maybe you can. Can you throw the bomb down? No. How am I meant to do this? Are you supposed to, like... Hold on. Are you supposed to, like... Is it a sequencing thing? Or are you supposed to sequence sequence it out correctly? Well, I guess it's not even. It might not even be necessary. Let me let me see if we got options. Uh, no, no, that's where we're going. Sniff it. We'll sniff it. So am I supposed to take like the furthest bombs and like time it out? Oh jeez, that's not even gonna hit it. Yeah, we're gonna Bam. Uh Care about you for right now. Yeah, I think you're supposed to take like the furthest bombs, 
and sequence it out so that you have the closer bombs for later. Or, no, actually, I think I did it just there. If these are both bombs. It might be. I keep furrowing my brow. I'm trying not to. I don't want those... I don't want those lines. I already have some some thin lines on my forehead, so I'm trying to keep that keep that under control. Whoops. There we go. Oh geez. Okay, that wasn't so hard. I just had to not be uh I had to not be so hasty. Have a little patience. Um But uh, yeah, I still feel pretty proud of that Zelda sequel artist. It was a different type of filming for me. It was a lot of work. I put a lot of thought and time into it. And while I think I think I could have done a better job, I still think I did a pretty good job. So I would like it if more people watched that one. And, uh... I did a review of the Fantasy Flight Fallout board game. Come on, come on. One, two. Bam! There we go. Perfect. Uh... Oh, there's a ad. Um... Hold on. Let's see if we can get this. Actually, I need to bomb in, that looks like. Yes. There we go. Oh, oh, okay. I guess I could be rewinding just to get all the mushrooms, but that seems like... That seems like a little extra cheap. You know? Whoa! I hear a birdo. I heard a birdo went. I'm gonna finish you up. I'm gonna finish you up. But yeah, that, that review of the Fancy Flight Fallout board game, you can tell when I, like, ran out of steam with that one. There's a lot of parts where it's just kind of voiceover over, like, a static background. And I wish I had really just, like, I hadn't done that because it, it feels lazy because it was lazy. <laughs> but otherwise, I think it was pretty good. I also wish I hadn't because the only time I really appear on camera, I was wearing these, like, I was wearing these shorts that didn't look great on me and I was like, really out of shape at the time. So, like, yeah, kind of regret that outfit choice, but it's not that big a deal. It's only, like, a time lapse over the, over the credits, but I'm still like, why did I do that? Hey! Bet! Okay. Hey, another one. Alright, after these, I'm gonna take a quick break. So I can go make uh, a smoothie. I need to get, uh, need to get some more nutrition in before it gets too late. I try not to eat too close to bed, but not too far away from bed either. There's a balance. I don't want to like be acid refluxing all night, but I also don't want to um, be hungry all night because they'll also mess me up. All right, so. Uh, just to be safe, I'm gonna create a suspend point in case this crashes or something. All right, I'll be back in just a minute. So don't go anywhere. Don't touch the internet dial. Be our back in just a minute.
All right, I am back. Got a smoothie. Gonna turn my humidifier on. It's getting a little dry in here. Ah, there we go. Yeah, AC is pumping because it's still still a little warm. Though we're cooling down. Uh, where I put my controller? There it is. I have so many controllers in here. I had to remember where the one I actually needed was. Oh, oh, it's a guy. It's a guy. Can I go through with him? I cannot. Where? They are pretty generous with the hearts. And yet I still die very often. Hmm. Where? Man, yes, so many staple Mario characters started out here. In a game that was not entirely meant to be a Mario game. It's, uh... Though, it kind of was... Okay. It, uh, the history of Mario 2 is weird, right? Because everybody... Everybody's like, it's a weird game. And then a decent amount of people are like, oh, it was actually supposed to be Doki Doki Panic. Like, they just reskinned. Uh a separate game they were making for a festival that had four other characters uh, because the Lost Levels, which was supposed to be Super Mario Bros. 2, was A, too similar, and B, too hard. Which, yeah, it is ridiculously hard. I could not get past, like, level two. Okay, it literally soft locks you all the time. It is brutal and unfair. Not a very good game, I would say. Like, it's not even like, like, it's too hard so it's bad, but it's like, it's like, no, it's actually just poorly designed. Like, it's just bad. It's just hard in ways that are vindictive and mean. And just really unpleasant, so, yeah. Not a great job on that one. Um, but here's the thing, right? A lot of people know the Doki Doki Panic thing. But, there's another layer to it, which is that... After they made Mario Brothers 1, they were like, we want to work with, um, we want to try and use more vertical stages. We want to use more verticality for this next one. So they started prototyping a game, a Mario 2, that would have a lot of vertical sections. And, uh, they were like, it's not working out, so we're gonna make the Mario 2, the Lost Levels, right? They used that prototype of their original idea for Mario 2 for a game they were making for a festival that they were commissioned to make for a festival. Doki Doki Panic. So actually, in a convoluted way, it was Mario 2 became Doki Doki Panic became the US Mario 2. So there's like... There's all those levels to it. It's such an oddity. And really, the sequels on NES were like that. Like this one, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, is so different, so unique, so creative. Maybe not necessarily that good, but I don't necessarily think the original Zelda's that good. Like the concept is cool. Man, I'm really sucking at this point. Drink some of my smoothie. Ooh, this one came out good. Mm -mm -mm. Lots of healthy fruits. A little bit of chocolate sauce. Just a little bit. Um. But uh, yeah, I that was something I said in my my Zelda sequelitis response number four million. Is uh. Is that I don't, I don't actually like the original Zelda. It's it like if it was the only game you had, which at back in the day you would have like a single game, so it totally makes sense. Um, and you were willing to like draw out maps and stuff, but like it is so obtuse. Like I, I played it on stream and I literally spent like over an hour just desperately searching 
for level two. I couldn't find it. I could, I tried, I, I feel like I looked at every single part of the map and I could not find the second dungeon. And that is ludicrous. And when I saw where it was in uh, the Game Grumps playthrough, I am positive I checked that exact spot where it is so many times. So, yeah, it's... I'm not a fan. Like, it's cool that it just lets you explore and it's just open and it feels kind of real and that, like, it's not directing you to do anything. You know, you you have to figure it out yourself. But, like, there's a, there's a middle ground where it's like, you can figure out stuff for yourself, but also it does give you a guide. It also can give you a guiding hand so that you don't... Ah. Like, it can also give you a guiding hand. It doesn't have to directly be like, do this. Like, it can find sneaky, interesting ways to point you in the right direction without necessarily, like, saying directly, like, go here. Which I think Ocarina of Time could have really used. Because it's very much like, just do this. Do this. And you'll make it to the next... Like, they were so... Uh, that's a big thing in a lot of those early 3D games is they were so worried about players being overwhelmed by the change in aspect that they were like, we have to be like very handholdy. We have to show them every single thing to do. Uh, plus, it was like you could have like a lot more text and stuff on the screen. So they went for that, and it's like. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it's clunky, at the very least. Like, there are much more elegant ways you can do that. I don't think you always have to, but there is a certain point where if you keep just having to directly state directions, it can get pretty obnoxious. Especially, like, it really can break up the momentum and the flow of a, uh of a game when you have to stop, listen to directions, or read directions, I suppose, and then and then move on with the rest of the game. It's like, it's, it's not good pacing. But a lot of it can be very fun. Ah, just taking a sip of my smoothie. Hmm. Oh, there's a few spots that didn't blend in all the way. It happens. This collagen powder I use, because, um, oh, I got a drip of something on my pants. Hold on. Got to Tide Pen that real quick. Um,. But, yeah, I, I don't really eat meat. I, I try not to eat meat, red meat, um, which means that I do not get a lot of collagen in my diet. So I do do a collagen supplement, which is bovine collagen, which, you know, kind of, uh, kind of defeats the point a little bit. I know, but um, I need a little bit for my health, for my joints my pretty face um but it's uh it really thickens up a smoothie also if you don't find an outlet store get get a Nutribullet or some kind of blender from there and get frozen fruit and have smoothies every day dude cause here's the thing for your health, you're supposed to have five servings of vegetables a day. That's a lot of vegetables. And like, even though I like completely stack like any sandwich I have with so much spinach, probably like two or three servings of spinach, it's still really hard to keep up with that that number. 
So, a smoothie, if you just like throw some like frozen kale in it and like a bunch of fruits, it's a great way to just like pack in some more fruits and vegetables, get, get some more nutrition, get some more fiber, all that stuff. And frozen, frozen fruits and vegetables, very cheap, very affordable. Oh, I uh, read a review today where someone was complaining about a one hour long tutorial, which sounded awkward. Yeah, I, I don't know, one hour. I mean, when we say tutorial in this instance, do we mean like, literally like a stage where they're just telling you over and over like, here's what you do, here's the next thing, or just like a section that's like, it's an hour of the part that's clearly teaching you the thing. You know? Cause like, uh, robot. Yeah. Ah. Um, uh, Paper Mario, the last one, uh, Origami King, right? I liked that game when it hit its pace. But the first like three hours of that game are like two, two it's like the first like 10, like 10 fights that you get into are like handholdy tutorials. Just like forces you to just sit there and be like, I think you should do this and then you should do that. And it's like, I get it. Kids will play this game and they need to have things explained explicitly told to them sometimes but that part is so excruciatingly long and dull once you get past that part the game is great very good very very fun gameplay pretty good story very very cool but uh yeah getting to that point is just like ooh. I feel like there were better ways to do this, my guys. Oh, no, nope, another one. How many times do I gotta hit you? Come on, bird. Come on, Catherine. Come on, fire an egg. There we go. There we go. Yeah, kids can figure things out. Which we know because we were also playing games as kids when they didn't do that stuff, and we figured it out eventually. We didn't always get very far. Yes, that was very, very close. Choose a player. I live on the edge. Not, for, not because I want to, but because I'm incompetent. A smart person would live further from the edge. But I'm not a, not a smart person. I'm an average person. Maybe above average in some respects. Below average in others. But I think that's like. I like how the islands in the background look like, uh, they look like a little cake, right? Looks like a little sponge cake with some icing. Mm, sounds nice. My, sp my roommates uh, went to McDonald's earlier and asked me if I wanted anything. Which again, if you don't eat meat, there's not much for you at McDonald's. And it's already, it's like the McChickens are okay. The burgers are like, uh, nonsense. Like I, the burgers are so ludicrously like, like nothing, you know? Like they're just a, a, a pile of gristle. Uh, but uh, yeah, I was just like, uh, could I have some chocolate chip cookies, please. Their cookies are very cheap, and they're not like incredible cookies, but they're better than like Chips Ahoy or whatever, because they're at least like warm. But they didn't have any of the cookies, so none for me, I guess. That's okay. That's okay, I didn't need the extra sugar. Sugar makes me break out if I have too much of it anyways, so probably for the best. Um. I could figure out some stuff, but th th that's the thing is, uh, going back to sequelitis again, like, the, a lot of games were really good about teaching you that stuff. Um, really good at, like, teaching you things, 
intuitively. Like, what what is it? Like, Aaron breaks it down with Mega Man. There's a GDC talk um, where a guy uses Half-Life as a, an example. But what, what he says is teach gradually through, uh, teach, what was it? Teach gradually through, not examples, through gameplay. Like, just, like, teach a tiny aspect at a time in ways where it's like, you basically, like, you teach them something in a safe place, then th add a little danger, then add some more danger, and now they're good. Like, there are ways to show what the obstacle is without it being perilous, then adding a reasonable amount, a reasonable amount of peril, and then uh, throwing them in. Uh, the Geek Knights were talking about this in a panel once, which is that, like, sometimes it's like, maybe we should put, like, a lot of board games will have, like, a kid mode, right? Where it's like, it's supposed to be an easier version of the game to dip your toes in. But the problem with that is that, like I was saying with Dark Souls, or, like, Soulsborns, um, if you change a game for balance or, uh, for difficulty, if you change it enough, it becomes a fundamentally different game. And so, like, if it's a beginner mode, it's like, if it's different enough, there is going to, um, it might, like, teach you bad habits for the actual game when you get to the real mode. So it's, uh, we're gonna zip that back. <laughs> I do really like this particular level because it's just like a lot of platforming which is my favorite part. I like really challenging platforming. If y'all couldn't tell from several years of me streaming. Um, but uh, th they said it's like yes you can like try and help kids and like take it easy on them or there is a decent amount of research and a decent amount of philosophy that says that you should just throw kids in the deep end, metaphorically, and just like, you know, have them go up against adults at full difficulty. And the ones who really want to play it, play, and like, really want to be challenged, will rise to the rise to the challenge, and they'll swim. And other kids, I mean, they probably weren't gonna have a fun time anyways because the game was too hard to begin with. J you know, having fun with a watered down experience is that, uh, it's still fun, but also it's like, it's kind of limiting. I don't know, this might be hypocritical based on what I was saying earlier about easy modes and stuff. So, th it's just like an option, right? I would say personally that like, you shouldn't necessarily baby kids, but you should still think about, like, trying to cover somewhat of a, a like, trying not to make your, um, your play field too narrow. Especially now, in an era when you can do so much technologically, like, you can totally be very inclusive of many different people and play styles. You just have to, uh... You just have to think about it. Design your game. You know? Design it intentionally and carefully. Oh, I didn't actually need that. Oh. Back to Fireberto. Okay. Oh. Ah! Boink. Egg. Boink. Ah, fireball. No thanks. No thank you. No thank you. No thank you. No thank you. No! Oh, that sucks. Hold on, we're gonna hop back on that. Oh. Ooh. Ha <laughs> There we go. These. Yes, there's a heart. 
Hooey! Ah. Alright, we're making pretty good progress. I'm a little over halfway through. What time is it? 8 o'clock? So I've been streaming... Well, about, yeah, three hours. That's pretty good. I'm trying, that's going to be my main thing, is I'm going to just try and stream for one, maybe two days. I'll probably do the marathons again. I think that'll be the thing for now, for at least... Whoa! Bro just is a regular enemy. How about that? Um... Oh, I see. Gotta ride the egg. Clever, clever, clever. It's been a, been a minute since I played this, so I forgot some of the bigger things. Um, and I yeah, rarely got this far as a kid, so. But uh, yeah, I will play. I will I will do Fridays, and I will focus on just doing like you know four. Or so hours, so like a good meaty stream, and then uh, last Saturday of the month I will do my marathon of something. So you know, if you guys have any suggestions for games to play or uh, particularly marathon games, uh, my general criteria is I want it to be between four and sixteen hours because I want it to be at least as long as my regular streams, but I don't want it to be longer than sixteen hours for now. If I end up in the future doing some charity streams, which I'd love to do, I'm definitely gonna do it once my hair is long enough again. Um, I'm about halfway to it being long enough to donate again. I will do another Banjo Kazooie Hairathon, benefiting wigs for kids. So tune in for that in probably sometime next summer. Um, but uh. Here? It's not here. That's okay. But, uh, yeah, I will probably go longer for those. Oh, come on. I will probably go longer for those, but for regular marathons, I'm gonna be like, ugh. Yeah, that's my thought. It's like, I'll, I'll do like one day. I'll, I'll have one day s scheduled, so Friday's at 5, for four hours, um, and then I will, uh, oh, 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 I see. Um, and then I will reserve the right to just do a random unscheduled stream in the middle there. Uh, probably drawing. I do want to continue designing characters for Dream School, cause like I've been I've been working on that still. Um, I uh, I'm still I'm kind of just like proofing the first couple seasons that I have written. Um, but I'm gonna get back to writing new episodes probably soon. I just finished proofing season one. Oh, I just. I just finished proofing season one. Season two is a little shorter, so in fact, that might change. I'm like really reconsidering. I was rereading uh, the premiere for season two, and I'm like, I actually feel like I could really come at this from a different angle because it's like, it's not that I f like totally dislike what I did, but I'm also like, ah, uh, I. I'm not super happy. I don't know. It feel it's like it's an episode that feels kind of preachy. It's a little long. Not really. Sh I don't. It, it introduces a character that I was very excited about, but I feel like I kind of I did a weak job characterizing uh, her. So I'm like, yeah. I I think there's a lot that I could do to improve that particular episode and just give give season two a much stronger um, beginning. 
Especially because when I was first writing it, I wasn't necessarily thinking about splitting them into seasons. Come on. There we go. So, um, now if I re rework it understanding that that's what it is, I can give it a, a little more importance. But that's some inside baseball. Oh. Oh, is this the one where it... No? Huh. Ah. This guy. Oh, jeez. A bubble boy. I'm too hot to touch. I'm too hot to touch. He's very Edwin. You know. The Mad Hatter from uh, Alice in Wonderland. Uh, and he was used, you know, King Candy. Uh, but there's also... There's a, a bit of... Uh, Snow Miser in there from uh, the Year Without a Santa Claus, which was a pretty good movie. I don't think I think that one doesn't get as much play as like your Rudolphs and your, you know, uh, Santa Claus is coming to town. Which Santa Claus is coming to town is my favorite personally, but uh, it's a pretty good one. Well, it's okay. Actually, it's not, but. It's got some good music. Everybody knows that I'm Mr. White Christmas. I'm Mr. Snow. Do 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 do. I'm Mr. Icicle. I'm Mr. Ten Below. People call me Ice Miser. Snow Miser. Wherever I go. Anything that I touch turns to ice in my clutch. I'm too much. And there's the slower. I'm Mr. Green Christmas. I'm Mr. Sun. Doo -doo -doo -doo. It's like the same song, but it's just like slightly different lyrics. Slightly different, not even fully different. Because they're two sides of the same coin. The hot, the cold. I don't understand the point of these, these misersmans. Seems a bit strange. Oh! Uh, uh, this is the last one. He wants revenge! Whoo, okay. He came back for more! Um. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Ah, gotta work through the smoothie before nine. It's my cutoff. It's also when I'm gonna end the stream. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Alright, um... So, yeah, I'm gonna, for now, I, I think a big thing with streaming for me is always whenever I take a break, I try and just jump back in at the same pace I was going before, and I just get burnt out. So it's like, I just, yeah, I'm just gonna do the one day a week for now, with the occasional other random streams thrown in, and uh, a marathon once a month, because I think, oh, that was baloney. A marathon once a month, because, you know, why not? Nice little event for everybody to uh, rally around. I like the marathons. I, they do good numbers. You know, not that I'm really caring about numbers, but it is still nice to see, like, oh, a lot of people watch today, you know? Um, and, like, yeah, I end up getting, like, a, a, a few more people in the community. Um. Mm. Uh. And that's always nice. 
Uh, and it's an opportunity to just try a game out. Granted, as I said before, I do want to still have the option to veto stuff, because, like, often if I end up raging towards the end of a marathon, it's because it's like, I've already been playing for so long, and I'm just like, God, am I going to be able to finish this? Oh my God, I can't make this jump. And, like, the idea of, like, ending a stream without actually finishing the game after putting in so many hours, I'm like... Ugh, it's so demoralizing. So, I'm trying, I, you know, that's a bit, but that's just like, it's an element that really changes up the flavor and the texture of those games, you know? Ah, no! Well, goodbye. Yeah, it was between, like, being kind of overwhelmed, not really liking my structure. Um. Yeah, I will talk about this. Uh, there was a problem member in the community who, you know, some of you are maybe kind of familiar with. I know at least one of you is very familiar with. Uh, Vinny. Who would pop into the stream chat quite often. And yeah, I think it was a big detriment to the streams that he kept doing that because, um, I'm ready for you this time. Oh, I love her. Oh, I actually. But uh, yeah, it's like he was just—he would always pop in. He would find a way to make, just like completely derail the chat to like make it about whatever he wanted god he just made me so uncomfortable and that was really the point is like th there's some stuff I'm not gonna go into because it, it was like pretty it was pretty personal and I'm pretty like I'm still really like pretty uncomfortable with uh, what it was but he, he really crossed a line um, I gave him a second chance. I don't know why. Ah, <sighs> come on. It was, a, yeah, and it was a mistake to give him a second chance. He did not clean up his act. He would keep doing this thing that was really annoying me that you guys wouldn't see because on my Discord, I have, um, I have the, like, the people joining and exiting in a private chat. Because, like, you guys don't need to see that. If you guys want to see that, let me know. But, like, I feel like anytime I'm in a server and I just keep getting notifications, it's like, this guy you've never heard of joined. I'm like, okay. I don't care. So, I'd like to know so that I know, you know, I can greet people. But, yeah, he would just, like, leave the server. Randomly, every few weeks, he would just leave the server. And then he would just, like, come back over and over and over again, and he wasn't even, like, saying anything in the server, so at a certain point, I was just like, if he does it again, I'm just gonna, like, block him outright and ban him, and he did. So I was like, yeah, that's it. And the reality is, I don't know why I even, like... It, it... There's pressure as a streamer to, like, let a lot slide if someone is really active. Especially when you're at my level where it's like, there's a lot of streams I have where I get zero chats the entire stream. And that's tough. So having someone who is like there very often and is like, gonna, you know, keep your chat active, it's like, I didn't like how he was chatting, but I was like, uh, it's better than nothing, question mark? But... It wasn't. It was much worse than nothing. And so, I eventually was like, yeah, I just need to get rid of this guy. And, um, the main thing that I realized after a while is, like, any time he popped in, I would immediately, I, I would immediately, like, uh, my mood would just drop. I would just be, like, so unhappy and uncomfortable until he left. 
and everything he said just made me, like, put me on edge. Made me real nervous that he was gonna say something gross. And, like, really inappropriate. I don't know, he just... The thing is, I, I knew him before I streamed, and I have, like, met him in person. We, like, shared a hotel at a con with other people. It was a group. And, like, because of that, he just got way... acted way too familiar, like he was, like, a really good friend or something. It's like, I barely knew the guy. He barely knew me, but he acted like he knew me really well, and it made me so uncomfortable, and I just... Yeah, it, it really... Oh, I don't want to waste that. So, yeah, it, it just... And I did... I don't know. I, I felt uncomfortable of even, like, dealing with the situation. So, I just... It made me just not want to stream, because I didn't want to have to, like, risk him popping up and, like, making me feel miserable and uncomfortable. And at a certain point, I was like... Why am I even keeping this guy around if he's actively making me not want to do something I like doing? So, he's gone. Fully banned. Fully blocked everywhere. If he comes back under a different name, then I'll deal with that when it happens. But, yeah, that guy really sucked. Yeah, it's possible that he would scare up, but that's the thing is if like, if he was like politically gross or something where it's like obvious, politically gross or antagonistic where it's like obvious that he's gonna like sh push people away, um, he would have been out immediately. But the fact is it made me personally uncomfortable in a way that I don't think necessarily translated at first, but then, yeah, eventually I realized, like, anytime he comes on, it completely ruins my commentary because I'm on edge, like, having to deal with his bullshit. And he's just, yeah, he's just, like, uh, being weird and creepy. And I just don't want to deal with that. I have enough to focus on. I have enough to focus on. Just like playing a game and trying to make commentary and keep up with chats. Um, so having to also deal with like his his creepy energy, there's just no need for it. So getting getting rid of him was really the thing that made me feel like I, I needed to honestly recover for a while. I didn't realize like how much it was actively like kind of traumatizing me having to deal with his nonsense. Um like, frankly, and it's, it's frustrating because I know that he meant it in the best way. He thought he was being friendly and funny, but he wasn't at all. And it's honestly, it's, it was like, it was pretty toxic. He was a pretty toxic quote unquote friend. And I, I had to like deal with that, like just unpack it before I could really come back to streaming. Um, and really the push was Egan, my sibling, really wanted me to stream again. Uh, and I was like, yeah, for you. If, if, if I have that as a motivation, then I'm like, yes, I, I can, I can deal with my last hangups. And you know what? I'm really glad I did because I'm having a very fun time. As much as I am having to address this stuff, I'm, you know, I do want it to be out there in the open. Like, that's a big part of why I wasn't streaming for a while. It was that. It was, like, my schedule just being overwhelming. And it was, yeah, just, like, what, where my stream had, like, led was just, like, not, not my jam. So, hopefully this is starting back off on the right foot. And hopefully that's the only drama I have to deal with for a while. But, yeah, I, I was dealing with it behind closed doors for the most part. So, I'm glad coming back that, you know, there are people watching. That was, like, something I was kind of nervous about as well. It's like, I've been gone for so long, I already didn't really ever get that many viewers. So... If I had come back to a stream with, like, nobody, 
watching. I probably would have stuck it out, but I would have been pretty demoralized to not, uh... You know, I, I would be very unmotivated to actually- Whoa, what is that thing? I would be pretty unmotivated to keep going, but yeah, I appreciate everybody who's tuned in today, because that really, uh... It's, a uh, very... What is it? Heartening. You know? It's- it's encouraging. To- to know that, like, at least somebody would want to spend time watching my stuff. I put a lot of work into it. So... Even if it's only one or two people, if anybody cares, that feels like it's at least kind of worth it. It's also, I got really busy with voiceover stuff, but in ways that are like... I, I was working so hard on the anime, I was writing that, and I like really neglected a lot of business responsibilities. So after like a couple months of just obsessively writing that, like doing nothing else, I had to step back and be like, okay, I'm okay right now, but I have to get back on marketing. I have to be get back on finding work because I'm going to run out of money otherwise. So I had to get on top of that. So I was split between those two things. And uh, yeah, it's like I'm in a ton of projects, but a lot of them don't pay. There's like two or three of them that are going to pay eventually, but that's, you know, that's going to be quite a while because there's still a lot of production happening. Um, <sighs> but yeah, it's, uh, I, I just got to do my own stuff. Like, there's a lot I could say about the projects I'm in, and it's like, I don't want to disparage anyone for, like, you know, doing what they're passionate about, but man... There's so many projects I'm on where it's like, why are you doing this? Like, what? Like, are you even gonna be creatively fulfilled when this is done? Like, you're... I don't know. There's like one specific instance that I could use as an example, but I feel like... I don't feel like calling anybody out. It, it, in the grand scheme of things, it was not like it was a bad thing. It was just like very emblematic of my point, which is that... Hmm. <laughs> How do I put this? There is a lot. Um. <clears throat> there is a lot of. I'm trying to pick my words very carefully, because I could I could be very vitriolic very easily with this, because it does in a way it does really upset me, and it shouldn't. Really, I should like. I should be willing to let this go, but it's also, like, it really affects... Uh, it, it affects the entire environment of the thing that I, like, am most passionate about in, in a way that I do feel is negative. I, uh, there is an environment... Especially, like, post-COVID, there's an environment now where everybody thinks that they should make something. Even if they don't actually have an idea for something to make. Wh um, which, granted, if you want to make something, you should. Alright, I'll, I'll put that out up top. If you genuinely are passionate about something and want to make it, regardless of skill level, this is this is a point of contention amongst a lot of people. I don't think you have to be good at something to like make it. I, I don't think skill should be any kind of barrier to entry to, to do things creatively. Because as human beings, we thrive on creativity. We have to have a creative outlet of some kind. And the reality is, most people are not going to be that good. And I mean, also with creative outlets, it's like, 
who's quantifying what's good, you know? Like, that's very subjective. But, like, you don't have to have a lot of technical skill. Alright? You can be actively very, very bad at what it is you want to do. But that doesn't matter. You should still do it, and you should still enjoy it. You shouldn't necessarily post it. And you shouldn't necessarily involve other people in it. Um, I'm trying to keep it vague. Because if I put too many details, then uh, it'll be very clear to the people involved what I'm kind of... Uh, I'm kind of subtweeting. I, I'm sure there's a better way to say that, but I'm kind of like alluding towards a very particular project recently. Hold on, I gotta take a sip of, sip of some. Oh my god, it's almost 840. I gotta finish this thing off. I always try not to make huge smoothies, but I put like four or five things in it and it like really bulks up really fast. Okay. Whoop. Okay. Uh, uh. So yeah, I think that people should make things, but I think also just because you make something doesn't mean you should necessarily share it. And I also think that if you were involving other people uh, if other people are being involved, you should remember that it is your project. Which isn't to say, which is to say, remember that it's the thing you're passionate about. People are willing to help, and people are passionate about helping. Often. Right? And that's a great thing. Collaboration is awesome. But... You should always keep in mind that if it's your project that you came up with... Oh. Oh. Two boss. Mini boss, big boss. Um. Oh, how do we deal with this guy? You'll make a tasty treat. You'll make a tasty... That's just a dang old thing. I've been watching, uh, listening, I should say. Whoop. I've been listening to, um, Tuned In with Jim Cummings, which is a podcast that started, uh, earlier this year featuring Jim Cummings, the voice of Winnie the Pooh and his friend, the tiger guy that I don't, <laughs> I'm now kind of uncomfortable saying, which I know, I know is kind of like kind of like a far line, but it's like, it sounds very close to another thing. Um, which sucks, because he was my favorite character. Well, my favorite character is Gopher, but he doesn't get as much play. Um, and, and Darkwing Duck, and like a million other characters, right? Uh, and like, he gets guests on sometimes. It's fun. It's a pretty fun podcast. It's mainly, it's like these two Australian guys who do like a lot of like, re uh, we review every episode of The Simpsons kind of podcasts. And they like interview him every time. Uh, but yeah, it's like very clear that he's like an older dude at this point. He's very, he feels like a grandpa. And he says the same stories over and over and over again. And it's like, okay, okay. Choose a player. Um, I'm getting sidetracked from my original point, though. My larger point is you should strive. You shouldn't strive to do something so ambitious that you'll never do it. Like, you don't want to do, like, Yandere Dev, where he's like, I'm going to combine Persona and Hitman. And on the surface, it's like, whoa, that sounds awesome. That's so ambitious. When in reality, we should be like, whoa, that's... That's ambitious. Like... That would be ambitious for a AAA studio, let alone a dude working by himself. Um, and with volunteers. That's the thing that gets me with that, is that, like, he's doing something that is not really feasible, and he's 
getting a lot of other people to do the work of it for him. And like, I'm sure he's also doing a lot of work. But like, yeah, it's, that's, that's a whole other uh, thing. But like, like you should at least ambition to make something interesting, I guess is my point. Because there are too many projects I'm a part of where it's like, I don't care if something is done bad, but I do care if something doesn't have much of a point. Like, if you're just taking something... Oh my god, the amount of, like, dub projects where it's like, we're gonna do a fan dub of this anime, and it's like, that anime already has a dub, though. So what's the point? If the only thing different about it is you did it this time... What's the point? <laughs> you know? And I guess the point is, like, practice? But again, it's like, don't post your practice. Keep your practice to yourself. Um... Uh... Post your, like, finished works. You know? Try, try and make... I've been following the KonMari method lately, which is the, you know, it does a spark joy, that whole thing. Um, Marie Kondo, KonMari, that's what she calls it. Uh, and it's great. Um, I don't follow it very strictly, but I did do the whole tidying thing. I got rid of a lot of stuff that I didn't need. Um, and that feels very freeing. But uh, something she says is that your bookshelf should be a hall of fame for the books that you love. And overall, the point... Yeah, exactly. Or, like, I remember early on, one of the, uh... Someone had a casting call for... They wanted to do a dub of Inspector Gadget? Like, a full dub of the whole show, and it's like... It's already in English. Why would you dub this? Oh, I gotta find the... Okay. Um... But, uh... Let me think. Uh, the KonMari method, right. Basically, the whole point is that you're not thinking about the stuff you're getting rid of, right? Like, you are considering it, but the whole point is that you should be focused on what you're keeping. Your home should be full of things that bring you joy. And if there's something in your home that doesn't bring you joy, right? For whatever reason, the smallest reason, if it doesn't make you happy, you shouldn't you shouldn't have it there your home should be a place that makes you just like happy fully so similarly i would say um in my philosophy and obviously this is my you know this is just how i i would handle things if you post like a youtube or twitter or social media your profile should also be full of only things that spark joy. Like things that you are proud of, things that you like, that you want people to see. So if your, if say your art Twitter is just packed with like practice or just like sketches or whatever, just like work in progress stuff, um, to the point that it's difficult to even find the, your finished work. I, I would say that that is not great. I would say, frankly, it's like, work in progress stuff is fun to see sometimes, but save it for like a Patreon, right? Save it for the people who are really committed, who like love your stuff to the point that they will pay for it, right? And then put only your best works out on, on your standard social medias um, as a way for people to see what you do and then hopefully eventually become like a paying person, you know? Um, again, that's like my own, that's that's just what I'm, I'm saying. And I plan to do this as well with like my YouTube. I'm gonna delete a ton of, well not delete, cause I don't wanna, I don't think I have all of those files still. I, I'm gonna unlist a ton of stuff. Um, that I'm just like, where I'm just like, you know, why did I 
leave this up here. Because there are some things I'm proud of, but it's like, why am I keeping hanging on to the things I'm not proud of? If, if, or like another thing she said is like, if there's anything in your house that you would be embarrassed if someone found after you died, you sh maybe shouldn't keep it. <laughs> right? Like, obviously there's, in all of these cases, there's exceptions. But, like, similarly, it's like, if there's something on your social media that you'd be embarrassed if someone saw, it's like, take it off then. And, like, there's definitely that. Or, like, I'm not necessarily embarrassed, but there's plenty of points where there's plenty of stuff on my YouTube where I'm like, what was the point? Right? Going back to, like, the stuff I'm not super proud of with, like, the movie reviews and the unboxings, it's like, I got pretty good at making those, but it's like, in the end... What was that accomplishing? Like, you know, nobody was watching it, and I wasn't particularly happy with it because I wasn't putting in my full effort. Because it didn't feel like it was worth it, and it's just like, I'm just not, it, it was just content for the sake of content. Like, it was cool to, like, have something coming out once a week. But in the end, that's all it was. It was literally just, like, filler to, like, keep working on a schedule it wasn't anything that I was happy with or that like I really feel like should exist necessarily I'm not ashamed of like making it but I'm like yeah it's I learned my lesson once again with the KonMari thing it's like um you there are many things that you get to learn something. You, le you learn something from everything you get. And often that thing is just like, I didn't need this, right? Or this was not something that makes me happy. Or like, you know, just understanding like, this isn't something I like. So similarly, it I learned a lot from making those videos, but now that I've learned it, there's no need for them to stay up, you know? So. With all of that said, yeah, there's a lot of projects I'm on where it feels like I'm not going to begrudge, again, I'm not going to begrudge anybody for not, um, like, having a great deal of skill. You know, maybe they're not a great writer. Maybe they, their idea is not that interesting to me. But, um... As long as people are, like, doing the most they can with what they have. Because there's so much you can do now. Uh, digital pr art production is, like, basically free. There's free versions of everything. Um, and there's ways to get non-free versions for free. So I won't publicly encourage that. Um, but, uh... Stuck. What is... Where's this key? I feel like I've been in every pipe. Would it be this big one? Nope. Um, but like, yeah, you can do literally anything. And I, uh, I don't know. It's like I was watching, um... Syriac, right? Syriac... A lot of people know him. He's He does those really trippy animations like Cows, Cows, Cows and a lot of other stuff where it's just like a lot of really bizarre editing. Um, kind of Terry Gilliam, honestly. It's very fascinating stuff. But you've definitely seen at least one of his things in some form. And uh, he's an editor, right? That's like the core of what he does is he does interesting animation edits, kind of. Like it's... It's all using, like, an editing program, but there it's effectively animations. Yeah, th th it's animation. Um, but I think I wasn't in here yet. But uh, the thing is, he, he makes his own music. The music in the videos is music that he made. And it's not incredible. It's generally, it's, like, pretty straightforward... Kind of crunchy, uh, oh, there it is. Kind of crunchy, um, 
like techno EDM, very kind of, you know, garage band, right? Like the program garage band. Like it's probably a lot of loops. It's decent structures. Like I like it. Don't don't get me wrong. This is not me saying that it's bad. It's it's uh it's it's basic, right? It's it's not complicated. Which is one of the things I like about it. The fact that it it's very um it's unpretentious. He threw it together and it is as good as it needs to be for what it's for. And I like it. Um But that's the thing, is he put in that extra effort. And it probably didn't take that much longer. Like, he's not, like, an incredible musician, and it doesn't seem like he necessarily wanted to do music, although I could be wrong on that. I don't know the guy. Maybe he did have a passion for both. Maybe he has a music background. I don't know. But, um... He put in that effort, and I, it shows. Like him, or like, um... You know, Brian David Gilbert. My, one of my favorite online creators. It's between him and Aaron Hansen, their type of first. Uh, just so you know what the ranking is currently. Alright, I gotta this save. There we go. Um. But, uh, yeah. It's like he makes the music for his stuff. And part of that is because he has a music background. But like, it's just doing the most with what you have, you know? You have all of this at your fingertips. You can do whatever you want with it. So you should do as much as you can with it without going crazy out of scope, right? So, uh, yeah, it's, it's like, when I see, or when I'm like, get cast in a project where someone is doing what feels like the barest minimum to be able to say they're making something, uh, it's disheartening. That, that, that's that's my larger point. Is like I get disheartened when I I keep thinking like. You know, I focus so much on all this effort, and then I see someone who is doing the least, doing the least that they possibly can, because, uh, how do I put this? There's, there's a quote, and I, I forgot who said it, it's some old English writer or something, probably, uh, but they said that uh, some people, some people want to be writers and some people want to write. And you can replace any creative endeavor in there, but that's, that's really... That's really what it is, is some people just want to be able to say, I'm a writer, and, you know, be, um, be, you know, impress people that they meet by being able to say that, and they want to, like, get the attention from it, and then there's people who actually adore writing, and even if they never made a single penny in their entire life from it, if they, nobody ever met them, saw, like, cared about their work, they would keep doing it because that's just what they love to do. They just have a burning passion to do it. Which is how I feel about acting. That's why I, you guys will hear in this stream over and over again, I go through so many trials and tribulations in the pursuit of being able to act. Even when it doesn't pay, even when I don't necessarily like the project, I just, I have to act. It's what I love to do. It's what I have to do in some way. But man, it really wears me down when I know that that's, 
when I, I have that burning passion and I want to believe a lot of the people I work with do too, but they do nothing but show over and over again that they don't. I guess, like, they, they want to think that they have a large passion, but literally, like, Any obstacle will stop them, basically. Like, there's a million things will keep them from doing the thing that they they think that they're passionate about, that they say they're passionate about, that they have literally been wasting your time, asking you to help them, you know, having you spend your time and effort and skills to assist them in their 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 passion that they claim to have. Uh, that's stupid. Um, and to see that they clearly don't actually care as much as they think they do. It's frustrating. And the reality is that as much as 80 to 90% of the people making stuff online, or at least trying to, are part of that, are, are in that camp where they, they desperately want to be seen as someone who makes stuff. So they put something, something together. Um, they just like slipshod, start putting something, I guess, if someone was actually passionate about something, they would do everything they could to research and learn about it, to do it to their best ability and to improve as much as they can. But invariably, there are so many people. Okay, what's going on here? I don't know what that is about. Invariably, I get cast in a lot of projects where someone has done none of their none of their research none of the legwork just none of the work ah i see okay come on come on oh okay That's not it. Oh, excuse me. Got that smoothie. Funsies. Um, but yeah, it's like, I want to believe in people, and at my core, I do believe in people, and it's gotten me into a lot of trouble in the past. I I'm very gullible, I'm very trusting, I give people way more chances than they deserve, but that Vinny situation being a prime example. Um... And <sighs> yeah, it's I don't know. I it's just it's frustrating because having been taken advantage of so many times by people, I see that same thing happening unintentionally in many cases among people who think that they're doing the best thing that they can, right? Which is what makes it most frustrating, because they don't... When I've had to leave projects where stuff was 
actively toxic. Like, it literally, like, the director did not know what they were doing. They were asking way more of everybody else than they were putting in. And they were communicating in ways that were, like, actively harmful to everyone else's workflow and just mental health. Um, and they didn't mean to. Not in the slightest. No, they, they, they thought they were doing the best that they could. Um, and it's like, I had to leave and I had to explain to them. It's like, this is, you really need to do your research. You need to learn how to handle a team because right now you are actively like hurting everybody here by continuing to have us on this project and lead us this way. And they wouldn't have it. They wouldn't hear any of it because of course, so many things are follow your dreams, keep your passions, you know, don't, you know, I, I, I said to them directly, and I know this is gonna, like, this is my point, really, is that I have been in dozens and dozens of projects, and so many of them have never gotten, like, not even off the ground, like, literally, they haven't even gone to step one, because the person running it does not know what they were doing, and... It's not like they couldn't have learned. It's not like they couldn't have just Googled how to do the thing and learned how to do it correctly on at least a basic level. They could have easily done that. That's what that's what frustrates me. That's what upsets me so much about this stuff consistently. Because that's how I learned how to do all these things. That's how I learned how to stream. That's how I learned how to act. How to tell story. Like, everything that I do. I took the time to learn at least the basics. And after that, you know, you kind of have to forge your own path. But, like, you gotta f start by actually, like, just going by yourself and learning the basics. You don't start the project and learn on the job. Okay? That's how you hurt people. Usually emotionally. Thankfully, in the kind of projects I'm on, only emotionally. In a lot of indie pr film projects, physically too, like, the safety on a lot of indie film projects is horrifyingly lax. Um, because, like, they're like, we're renegades, we're rebels, and it's like, no, you're dangerous idiots. You should take, like, five minutes to learn about film set safety. Um, so thankfully, it's always been just emotionally, but at the same time, that's still not good. That still shouldn't be happening, especially considering we are... Yes, regulations are written in blood. That is a great way to put it. Um, but yeah, it's like... All of these pro like they're someone's passion project, and that person needs a bunch of other people to donate their time and energy to this for it to become a reality. And whether they get it or not, the way they handle that, the way that they, the way that they handle other people's donated time and energy is incredibly wasteful and incredibly disrespectful. And it, yeah, incredibly harmful. Like, and it's fully avoidable. Maybe not fully avoidable. There's still stuff that'll happen, probably. Amateurs, you know, but you can mitigate so much. But the first step is like actually caring. And as much as they think they care, they don't care at nearly as much as they should. That That's my larger point, basically, is like, if you really, really care about doing this, if it is actually your passion, you can call it a passion all you want, but if you actually are passionate about it, you show that by showing that you care enough to do things the right way. It doesn't have to be the exact same traditional way. You can do things in non-traditional ways, but you should at least learn the basics of, you should at least learn the traditional ways, learn what they are, so that you can at least know why you don't want to follow them. You know, if you want to forge your own path, great, but understand 
why. Understand on a basic level what what the other path is so that you can tell. Like, in many cases, you don't have to forge your full own path. Like, I think that's the thing that really irks me is that they think they need to start from scratch with a, and just figure it out as they go. Have some bombs. He's back. He's back. I love him. Um, like, I think that's the thing that frustrates me. And it happens in board games, too, and it pisses me off so much when people are just like... I'll just learn as I play. It's like, no, you won't. Let me teach you the rules because, like, with a video game, you can just poke around and you can just push the buttons and eventually you'll kind of figure out what's going on. In a board game, no, actually, because you have to actively do everything that you do. Like, you have to make conscious decisions about what you're doing, so you have to actually understand what you're doing. So if you are just going to learn as you play, you're basically putting you're putting the onus on the person who knows how to play to deal with your crap to like teach you in the way that you seem to want to rather than the way that they already like were willing to do they already were willing to donate their time to like make this situation happen for you and you threw that away because you thought that they wouldn't be good enough like i know what i know you think that it every time they're just like well i don't learn well that way no that's what you're saying, but what you're really trying to say is you don't think they're going to teach you well enough. And that is frustrating. You should have some faith in them that they can teach you the game. Oh, I'm terrible at board games. I love board games. I play them a lot. I'm very bad at them. But, oh, I'm almost done with this game. I'm just going to finish this off. We're, we're a little over the hour, but it's like, it's only two more levels. I can beat this. That's great. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like, you need to just learn the basics. Like, just at least let them teach. And yeah, you'll probably have to be reminded of stuff. All right? It's understood. Like, that's the thing. I think people assume that it's like, if, I, if somebody teaches you, they're going to expect you to remember everything, and you're going to, and you're not allowed to, like, be reminded or ask questions. But it's like, no, 100%, like, they're fine with you asking questions and being reminded. Like, that's totally cool, especially with more complicated games, for sure. But, like, at least give them the option to try and teach you to start. No, I get it. Well, that's the that's one of the, the problems with board games in general, right? Is that, you know, it's the sequelitis thing again. You, the best way to learn a game is gradually through experience. Through experience, that's what it was. Like, um, if you want to teach somebody your game, you give them a little bit at a time through the play so that they slowly get to enjoy it over the course of the entire game. Um, but, uh, yeah, board games, you kind of can't do that. Because, again, it's like, you can't just be like... What do I do? I don't know. Put this piece down. It's like you can't do that. It's like you have to at least understand the basic actions, right? Like there's a lot of other stuff that would inform your strategy that is also important. But like you need to know at least a basic handful of actions so that you know what you can do to start poking around and playing. But yeah, it is very difficult, in fact. And in reality, I'm always the person... <clears throat> I'm always the person in my group teaching the games. And I read through, literally, I read through the rule book, not understanding a lot of it. Then I read through the rule book a second time. And now because I've already, now that I've seen all of the rules of one time, I can, the second reading, now I have a frame of reference for what most of that means. Because often it'll reference, like, th there's a Baphma dad here, and it's like, what's that? It's like, we'll explain it later. And that's the thing, is like, until they explain it later, that what they're saying right now makes no sense, and it's kind of a waste of time. So you gotta... When you read it the second time, it's like, I know what Baphma dads are now, so this part makes sense, right? Similar with the game. It's like, until you've played a board game, like, two or three times, you don't... F you probably aren't going to know most of the rules. In fact, that's a big thing in, like, board game design. Like, ah, son of a bitch. Um, is the flow state. It's like, 
It's understood that the first like three or four times you play a game, you are not going to remember all of the rules. And in fact, the first two or three plays, you are it, probably going to be so focused on just like remembering what you can do that you're not actually thinking of any kind of strategy or like enjoying the game. So uh, once you hit that point where you know you have played it enough that the rules are second nature, that you don't have to think about like what can I do, it's like I know what I can do, and you can start actually like putting strategies together and like experiencing the game, that's called the flow state. And that's the point you want to be in, in any game, right? Like the point after the tutorial, right? Where you know, where you have all of your abilities and you can actually like start to use them and you just know second nature. Like if a, you don't even think like, I'm gonna hit this button and do this. You just think, I'm gonna do this. And you just naturally second nature hit the button because you have played it enough at that point that you just know, like that's just something you can do. Yeah, well, Yu-Gi-Oh! is also, like, kind of cumbersome and unintuitive in a lot of ways. Like, it's... Uh, I mean, it's... Mm, I, there's a lot I could say about Yu-Gi-Oh! I still really want to make that video I was talking about you with. Um, this, is, this isn't going to mean anything to anybody else, but I... I, I do really still want to make that video I was talking about. It's just like, it's going to take a lot of time and research. So, it's on the back burner. But it's it's in there. It's going to happen. Someday. And in fact, yeah, with the, the I want to start making like higher effort YouTube videos. That's one. That's one that I'm definitely going to make is... Um, well, you guys will see it later. I don't want to get too deep into it because it's still pretty half-formed but it's gonna take a lot of research. That's the big thing, it's like all the the ideas I'm most excited to do for YouTube is stuff that will require a lot of research, and that's a lot of time to spend on something that is, you know, just supporting something. It's not even like necessarily the fun part, it's just supporting the fun part. Yeah. Like, I don't want to bash on it, because a lot of it is taste, and, like, I'm just not super big on uh, TCGs to begin with. Mainly because I'm really... I, I really don't get deck building. It's not even that I'm bad at it, it's just I don't... Like, you can tell me all the tips you want about mana curves and balance and all this. I just don't get it, man. When I'm sitting there looking at all the cards, I'm like, I don't know, uh... This one has an ability that talks about that one, so they'd probably go together, but do I even want either of them? I don't know. There's just... There's just too many options. And, like... Yeah, it's... Uh, I remember seeing a video about this. I don't remember where it was. Um, but there, there, there's two kinds of people when it comes to things like that. There's... When it comes to options. There's maximizers and there's sufficers. Right? Uh, a, a sufficer is someone who's just like, that's good enough, right? They'll, they'll take the, the most, they'll, they'll take, you know, whatever is the bare minimum. You know, maybe they'll, they'll look for a little bit more if they can, but basically they'll look for like the quickest route. Maximizers are people who are like, I have to see every single option and I have to know exactly like what I'm gaining or losing with any decision, right? Which is how you get... Uh, one of my favorite board game terms, you get analysis paralysis. Which, you know, one of the people in my group gets that pretty bad, where you're just like, I have to read over everything, I have to think about it forever, and it's like, just take your turn. Please. Please do it. Um, uh, and that's the thing is, I'm not generally a maximizer, right? Generally, like, when I'm playing a board game, I literally just, like, take my turn as quick as I can because... I just want to play the game, right? And it's like, I know I'm probably not going to win the first few games anyways, so I just take my turn, move on. Maybe it was a bad choice, maybe not, but I'll come to that at, uh, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. But when it comes to card tabletop games, I'm like, man. Or when it comes to TCGs, I'm like, and deck building, I'm just like, man, I wish I knew, like, more of the cards. I wish I knew, like, 
Because especially in high-level TCG play, I've seen, like, high-level, like, TCG people talking, and it's like, they know every single... There'll be tens of thousands of cards, and they know every single one. As soon as, like... As soon as, like, a new expansion comes out, like, within a couple days, they know all the cards, they know which ones they want, they know what they're gonna do with them, and I'm like... I can't even imagine. That sounds so... Overwhelming to me. Yeah, sure. And that's valid. That's pr probably what I'd do. Like, um, in terms of Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, I think when I was doing the Marie Kondo thing, I got rid of my deck. Uh, but... I just got, uh, a Yuya starter deck. Clown boy. I like him. It, it, cause I like him, basically. I liked the little, the little circus animals, right? Yeah. Exactly. That's the thing, is, like, if you are into a TCG like that, that's, like, the only thing you play. And that's just not how I work with games. You know, I don't... Th there are deep gamers and there, there are broad gamers, right? Th there are people who take a game and they want to explore the depths. They want to plumb every ounce of game they can out of it and just see everything it has to offer. These are the kinds of people who will, like, 100% a game, get the platinum trophy, you know, both of my roommates, pretty much like that. And then there's the broad gamers, where it's like, they want to see what the game has to do, but they want to see a broad variety of games. They want to just, like, figure out what makes it tick on a general level, and then they want to move on. And that's me, right? It's like, I play most games, like, 70 to 80% of the way, and then once I have all of the mechanics and I've played around with them for a minute, I'm like, okay, moving on. Like, I'm, I'm good, I did it. I, fi I got what it was about, I don't need to finish it. And it's like, I would rather spend, rather than spending, you know, I, it's like I already spent 20 hours on this game seeing what it was about already. I feel pretty satisfied. I'm not going to spend another 60 hours to get another 10% of game out of it, you know? That's, that's all I'm saying. <sighs> it's like, it's just at a certain point, there's like two separate curves, right? And it's like as it's like a curve that's going up of like gameplay and it flattens out at a point right around the point where i stop where it's like you're only getting a tiny bit more if you keep going and then the time and it's like what it's, it's there's some people who will go to the end of the graph and put in every ounce of time they need to and they will see every bit of that flat that uh that flattened curve but for me it's like as soon as the curve starts to flatten or maybe not as soon, but like with generally like right after the curve has flattened or at least has appeared to, that's where I'm like, okay, I don't need to see the same thing again to get like another little ounce of like enjoyment out of this. Especially considering that in a lot of cases, I wasn't necessarily getting that much enjoyment out of a game to begin with. Like, there aren't a ton of games that I absolutely adore, but I still love game design, so I still like to see what people are doing, you know? Uh, some people have won tournaments due to playing comp competent deck that no one thought to prepare for. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. You just have to, like, have a pretty broad um, knowledge of the game as itself and... That's cool if that's what you're into, but it's just like, that sounds like too much for me. Yeah, that's how fighting games mostly have to work too. Or like the distinction between the casual button masher and the specialist in a fighting game. Exactly, and that was the thing I was trying to kind of break in myself doing fighting games is like, I was like, okay, this is a time where I'm gonna play the whole curve. I'm gonna go past when it flattens, I'm gonna grind, I'm gonna do, because that's something I'm like, it's not something I've wanted to do as a gamer, but I'm like, that's an that's an integral experience to gaming that a lot of gamers enjoy, and it's a, an experience I haven't had, and I'm like, I should have that at least once, so I was like, I'll do it with fighting games. But you're like, yeah, man, that curve flattened, and I'm like, oh, man, there's some diminishing returns here. And it's like, the diminishing returns were still returns. And I wasn't hating it, but I'm like, alright. Alright. 
I need I need a boost somewhere in here. Some serotonin. I don't know, man. I I think I just don't have patience for grinding in general. Like I'm sure I've said it many times on here, but I mm, uh my opinion is that grinding in general is poor game design. Though at the same time, yeah, I think I have to aden make I do have to rework that thought because like with fighting games it's like it's pretty integral and it's like it definitely makes sense. There's no way you could really make a fighting game that didn't have some level of grind to it. Oh, no. No. He's mean, boy. He's mean. No. I thought we were friends. Please leave me. And it's like, yeah, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to have to grind in that, but I also think, like, it's... It adds a very particular texture to a game that doesn't really appeal to me personally in a lot of cases, but I... I think can be done well. I th Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, grinding in a fighting game is just playing the game like that's I think that's what I'm saying is like fighting games after you've like conquered the basics it, it's all grinding like you just play match after match like that's just what the game is but it uh, I, I it's different there because with grinding in like a JRPG or an MMO you're kind of just going after the same enemies over and over and over again and it gets very monotonous and tedious whereas In a fighting game, generally you have different opponents every time, or at least most of the time, and your opponents are also changing and improving, so having a real person there, there he was, Charles Martinet. Alright, I remember Wart being very hard. Maybe not that, well, these bubbles are quite the nuisance. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, those were his bubbles the whole time, turning people mean. I see. I see. Yeah, this is a final boss. For anybody who doesn't know. So that's what I'm saying. I think, yeah, there's... We're gonna start from the top. I am the great warrior. <laughs> um... I, I guess my point is... When I say grinding is bad, I mean monotonous gameplay is bad. Whereas, which is what grinding was synonymous with for me. But in reality, you can make dynamic, interesting grinding. It just, uh, it requires, it requires the addition of some kind of other element, you know? In this case, a large multiplayer, multiple, a large player base who bring bring their own sensibilities to things. Oh, whoop. Oh, was that it? I don't know. I had like long animation and a voice line. Oh. Nope, not quite. Whoop. Don't do it, don't do it. Uh huh. I think it's one more. That's four, right? Whoop, whoop. Whoop! Nope. So, yeah, this ended up being a marathon, basically, because I finished the game. And I didn't even start with this game. I started playing a different game, and it just didn't really vibe with me. Oh, no, more, okay. Don't like his bed sheet, the bulls. No. Got him! All right. Oh, I actually have to go through the door. Okay. Course clear. Here we go. There they are. 
These little demons. Monsters. Released to destroy the world above. Yeah, screw that guy. Oh man, is that blood? Or is that blush? I don't think, I mean, we didn't hit him that hard. Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah, I did it all as Peach, so uh... Peach! Yeah, you guys were hanging out too. Yeah, I guess it was those guys too. And it's all a dream. Spoilers. Spoilers. Just kidding, you just saw the whole game. It was all a dream. And then we got great outro music. Ooh. Ooh. I love it. Um. Yeah. I talked about it a lot on this stream. But, uh. In the end, I know I seem very negative in general. And a lot of people that I meet seem to think that I'm very pessimistic. But I am an eternal optimist. I want better for everyone, and I think everyone deserves better. And I know that can come off as abrasive, and that a lot of people seem to, th um, for a lot of people, it's unwelcome. And I understand that, for me to, you know, push them to be more than they are, because I think that they can be more than they are. Uh... But in the end, it is it does come from a place of love. I I I think that anybody I think that everybody deserves happiness. And I think that Um Yeah. You know, I think that you should be treating others well in your pursuit of happiness. Ah, see they fixed this. In the original, if you guys go back. Ostro and Birdo were switched. The names were switched in the original. Just a little, uh, just a little tidbit for you. Um, but... Bro, Birdo. But yeah, that's all I'm saying is, like, I'm in a lot of projects where it's people trying to make stuff that requires the help of a lot of other people. And... The way they handle it can be very disrespectful and very damaging, especially to a lot of new talents and a lot of people who are themselves amateurs and don't even understand that they're being mistreated. So they don't raise a problem. So, in the end, all I want is for every community to be happy, to respect each other, to do the work in understanding how to treat each other better, right? Like, I w like when I say that I want people to be competent, I'm not saying they're stupid. I'm saying that I want them to put in the basic effort to understand how to do things um, in a respectful, healthy manner with their team. Because there are people like directing is one thing but then when you're a director on these projects you are also a team leader and team leading is a whole other thing to deal with and a lot of people do it in a way that is not great but thankfully there are still many projects I'm on like Devil Diva um, and uh, Tender Loving Cannibal and several others that I can't name off the top of my head. Most of my projects are great. Honestly, there's nobody, like, the only toxic project I was on lately, I left. Everybody else is cool. Some people are making great progress, and I, you know, I would wish they would put a little more effort into it, but they're not, like, forcing others to do, to pick up their slack, so it's fine. Everybody's cool. I just, you know, I want the best for everybody, and that includes you two watching, so... Just leave with that. Know that you can all do better, but you're still doing pretty good in my book. All right? All right. Let's see who there is to raid over to. Who's live right now? How do I check that? Right. I, yeah, it's been so long I forgot how to use the Twitch app. 
Dokuro Skarmillion. Hasanabi. Hmm. I don't know who you are. Jonathan Teen. I don't remember who you are. Vapor Bobble. Hmm. Do I want to go to Vapor Bobble? Do I want to go to. Man, there's a lot of people stream. I guess it is Friday. Pinksel, Vapor Bobble. Pinksel, Vapor Bobble. Baldur's Gate 3, Death Store. I'll go with Pinksel. I always feel pretty. <laughs> Not that this is always why I pick who I pick, but like. Um, Pinksel always seems so, so grateful for the, for my raids, and it's like, that feels nice, and I want to support that attitude, so, I'm gonna raid Pinksel. Oh, it's not gonna let me through this. Sometimes it doesn't let me through this. Oh, oh, wait, it's popping up there. Let me, oh, hey, it's working. Okay, great, let Pinksel know I sent you. Have a great night. Have a great weekend. I'll see y'all next Friday for the next stream. We're going to keep it at that for now. But yeah, good stream. Glad I got a lot of stuff off my chest. Thanks for, you know, tuning in. I hope uh, I hope I wasn't ranting too much, but that's kind of half of my appeal, I guess. All right. Good night. Good night. Goodbye.